talk at Auburn University. Once again, a joyous occasion, led by first-year head coach Gus Malzahn. And right behind him, the star running back of this team, Trey Mason. It's all part of the pageantry of football in the SEC, a Saturday afternoon tradition. And we welcome you to the Home Depot SEC on CBS. This afternoon, Georgia against Auburn meeting for the 117th time. Take a look at the SEC East standings where Georgia still alive, but they must win today and they need a little help. Out West, Alabama undefeated at Mississippi State tonight. Auburn controls its own destiny. How about that? Good afternoon, everybody. Vern Lundquist, along with Gary Danielson and Tracy Wilson. Gary, I don't think there's a better story in college football than this turnaround by Auburn from a year ago. Vern, you just have to look at uh, what happened here. A team that had such low self-esteem a year ago, but they made a great decision. They made the right decision. They went back to Gus Malzahn, their offensive coordinator that won the national championship with him calling the plays. He's now come back, and he has kind of just got that team believing in themselves. There's players here, and he found some players, but most importantly, he found a quarterback. You know, it was Cam Newton when they won the championship, and now Nick Marshall is a guy that runs the Malzahn offense. He started out throwing a little bit, showing that he had the arm, but lately it has been his legs and the power running attack from that triple option offense, but he's got a guy too. Trey Mason has become that guy where if it's not Marshall, it's been Trey Mason and this offense has been dynamic on the ground. I think most of you know that Georgia was decimated by injuries offensively. They're getting healthy, but today the challenge I think Gary's going to be that defensive team yeah I mean you're not you know if you're gonna have any chance you have to slow down the offense and I think Georgia has the right combination now they don't have a lot of experience but they've got the athletes you have to be able to run and really chase down this offense redirect linebackers and defensive ends that can run on defense that's their big chance on defense but of course in the SEC or modern football you got to have a quarterback and they've got the most experienced quarterback in the SEC. A week ago, Auburn faced a guy that, you know, really was inexperienced. Now they're going to face the most experienced player in the SEC and Aaron Murray, and when he's got help, and he's getting help with Todd Gurley coming back, he may not be 100% this year, but he's pretty good even at 85%. Well, uh, the question remains for Auburn if they're going to complete this amazing feel-good story. They've got to win today. Uh, how do they do it? Well, I think the plan in this game is really simple. It's got to be three things that Auburn has to do to win this game. Number one, they have to stop Todd Gurley. Number two, they have to stop Todd Gurley. And finally, Vern, they better stop Todd Gurley. They need because if they don't, I don't think they can win. He will be a big part of this game. And here's the appearance of Nova. And the Auburn band will be right back. The Home Depot SEC on CBS is sponsored by Red Lobster, Nissan, K Jewelers, and by AT&T. SEC on CBS from Pat Dye Field in Jordan-Hare Stadium in Auburn, Alabama. 
Nick Marshall will be so much a part of this afternoon. For more on his story, here's Tracy Wilson. That's right, Vern. It is a big storyline today. Auburn quarterback Nick Marshall facing his former team. He played defensive back for Georgia, but was dismissed in February of 2002. He was not allowed to speak with the media this week, but on Sunday he called this just another game. Gus Malzahn telling me Marshall is so calm, he's so even-keeled. He doesn't think it will affect him, but did admit that we would probably have some butterflies and some extra adrenaline right about now, right before kickoff. But he said once the game gets underway, guys, he will be just fine. All right, Tracy, thank you. Rainstorm moved through Auburn last night, early this morning. We had a lot of fog, but the skies are clearing, the weather improving. Right now, 66 degrees, mostly cloudy with a peak or two of the sunshine. All-time series tied. Look at the point differential, 114. In part, that's because Georgia has won the last two games by a score of 83 to 7. Georgia won the toss, deferred. They will receive. Marshall Morgan will kick off. Auburn will receive. That is. And Trey Mason, the running back, is the deep man along with Quan Bray. Georgia six and three. Auburn nine and one. Short pooch kick bounces at the 25. Taken at the 22. Juan Bray hurried up, grabbed it on one hop, and Auburn opens with terrific field position. That's a lot of yards to concede for field position in a game. That comes because of Auburn's success in kickoff returns. You're basically spotted on the 40-yard line. And let's uh, take a look at the Chick-fil-A starting lineup. And the aforementioned Nick Marshall is on. Having a wonderful year, he ran for 214 yards in the last win at Tennessee. Gary, special teams. That's the first example of edge to Auburn. Absolutely, and they expect to win special teams, even dominate it. Here's Marshall. He keeps it on the read option, comes left. And let's check the offense for the Auburn Tigers. Robinson, perhaps the best athlete on the offensive line. Reed Dismukes is the captain of this game for Auburn. And an outstanding center. Slade, Young, Frosch, the fullback, Mason, and you saw the rest. And here is Marshall on second and six. Trey Mason. With modest yardage. Defensively for Georgia. Drew, Smith, Bailey. They're the down three. Floyd, Wilson, Herrera. Trey Matthews, a freshman, replaces another freshman. Quincy Mauger. Matthews has been hampered by a hamstring, but he's back. Third down, two. That's Uzuma in motion. Posh is the fullback. They come to the left side. Well, well defensed. Yes. First decision by... But did he fall forward right in the end? There was no whistle. And I think it's a first down. Trey Mason, a very strong. They might in stature might be tall, but he is very strong. What did he tell us he squat yesterday? I really don't remember. I didn't want to hear that number. 425. 420. No, that was his bench. Oh, that's right. I'm yes. sorry. I'm sorry. Does that with his arms? <laughs> Mason. Ramique Wilson, who leads the SEC in tackles, made that one. That's his 93rd of the year. Well, this is the decision point right there where the quarterback and the running back have to be seeing the same thing. 
And you see the result of the hurry-up offense on the left side of the screen. It's Mason again. Yeah, Todd Grantham believes that to stop this offense, which he calls very similar to the triple option veer. I mean, he says you have to stop it from inside out. If our defensive tackles and inside linebackers don't have a great game, we're going to have problems, says Todd Grantham. And he is the defensive coordinator at Georgia. You saw number three in the country in rushing the football. And if it's working well, this time it's Mason who keeps it, and it doesn't work so well. Herrera is there following the uh, first tackle of Trey Matthews. Well, this offensive line for Auburn has had the same five starters all year. They try to get angles and down blocks created from the basically inverted triple option offense that they run. Auburn has thrown only 16 passes in the last two games. They will throw it here with play action. Deep down the middle, got him! Sammy Coates, no! He fumbled it. He fumbled in the end zone. They called it completed. And Damian Swan runs it out to the nine-yard line. I'm sure this will be reviewed, but it was called a complete pass. Coates made the catch, or did he? One, two. Yep, I think so. I think so, too, but, you know, in college football, the ground cannot cause the fumble. I think this is going to be returned back for Auburn's football. I do, too. One, two. I think it'll be the five-yard line. Replay official is Gerald Hodges. Well, we started out thinking the review would be whether it was going to be complete or incomplete. Now the review is going to be better than that for Auburn. It's going to be complete, and they get the ball back. Penn Wagers is our referee today. Easy one-on-one -on -one coverage. Back judge very clearly says it's a catch. And then lets it go. No whistle. You can see he's reacting as a fumble. And really, that's what the official, the referee, should do. Is he should allow it and let the replay official overturn it. By the way, for those of you that haven't seen Auburn play a lot of football and you don't catch a lot of Sammy Coates, he is a brilliant athlete. Now, he's in a run offense, and he doesn't have the big numbers, but he's a 4-3-40 guy, and if he was on Texas A&M, you know, he'd have 75 catches. You're right. Well, he's a terrific all-around athlete. Uh, high school football, basketball, baseball. All three. Pretty confident, isn't he? Yes. Right there, watch. He, he's looked at the replay here in the stadium, and he's pretty confident. Georgia better get their defense ready because I got a feeling. I, I know that Gus Malzahn right now is figuring out what play he's going to run. There he thinks. He watched the replay. Review. Ruling on the field is an incomplete pass. It's third down. Well, I haven't been wrong much this year on these things. Was the ball moving? I, I didn't see it. I thought he had the ball. One, two. Well, here's the well, not first. A, uh, we're not perfect either, Vern, right? I mean, it's, we all... I understand. <laughs> the big call... Here's the first wow yep, and of the afternoon. Big call here now, third and eight, and this is not a comfortable spot for the Auburn offense. This is where the Georgia defensive line must make an impact. If they get Auburn in third and long, can those defensive ends or Ray Drew make an impact? Third and eight. Marshall comes to his left. Cuts back to, to, to 31. Still a decision. Yeah. They've got a great field goal kicker. Cody Parker is that kicker. Malzahn looks down. Be a 48-yarder, roughly. And Parkey's long for the season is 47. 
It appears they're going to go for it on fourth and one. Play clock now at 10. He's hurrying, and Gus Malzahn is hurrying them up. Four. Two. Got it. So does Trey Mason. I think Rameek Wilson had a shot at this tackle, and Mason made a miss. Now, actually, it was Harvey Clemens that had a shot in the backfield, and Trey Mason got underneath him and made a miss. This is the opening drive of the game, a pooch kick by Georgia, returned by Quan Bray. And now first down and 10. We're being told, just to give the uh, listeners uh, from the replay booth, that the receiver has to control the ball through the fall to the ground. So whether he made two steps, he has to control it as he hits the ground. First down. Here's the play. Catch. One, two. First and ten over for the 29. And there you see the call from the replay booth that he did not control it as he hit the ground. This is as quiet as I've seen you in a while. Well, I, I <laughs> thought he I'm had it. Just I thought he had it. I'm goading you a little bit. <laughs> First down and ten. <laughs> oh, for one for me, I guess. Oh. But he clearly had it. Mason. No, Marshall. That might happen a couple of times today. They have really developed a partnership on this read option. Well, and what's what's this real, you know, problem for the Georgia defense and the, what they have to watch is even though it looks like they stop them pretty successfully, you know, it's a seven-yard game yeah. on the play. And they Georgia played good defense on that play. 11th play of the drive. Uzuma, the tight end, is now top of the screen, split wide right. It's Mason again. And Amarlo Herrera, the fourth leading tackler in the SEC, second on the Bulldog team. Yeah, the forward progress is going to be very close again, third and probably less than a yard or maybe even a first down. It's going to be another measurement. Johnson, the defensive coordinator for Auburn. He said he thinks the story with a lot of spread teams is they struggle in the red zone. Auburn does not. Their offense is built a little differently, and they feel comfortable in the red zone. Diz Mukes, excuse me. One of the weapons that they have to account for is lose them are right there, the tight end. Yeah. In the red zone, he is a weapon. Here's the sweep. Ricardo Lewis, number five. Listed as a backup wide receiver, got the start today. That's his 14th, 11th run, I beg your pardon, and this of is the, the season. And this is the actually the third part of the triple option that it's called. They run it without pitching the ball. That's their wide pitch play with the speed sweep. First and goal. Marshall caught from behind. Tackle. Corey Moore, number 39. See, that's the type of athleticism that you have to have on defense to match up against Auburn. Corey Moore, this Georgia defense, has those type of players. And I don't care how much experience you have. If you can't run, you will get exposed. And the Verizon Red Zone stats for Auburn. See, 31 touchdowns, 42 trips. That's really good. Second goal. Nice little shift behind the line Mason for Trey Mason. It's a huge down here now for the Georgia defense. When they get a stop here. You can almost bet that Auburn would go for a field goal. On the ball. 
We played just a minute shy of halfway through the first quarter. This is the 15th play of the drive. Must account for this tight end in the red zone for Auburn. Timeout. Timeout. Third down goal. Mark Richt. His team has not seen the field on offense yet. And we welcome you back to Jordan Harris Stadium, the opening drive of the ball game. This will be the 15th drive for Auburn now on third down and goal. Fifteenth play of the drive. They got their big tight end matched up against Damian Swan to the bottom of the screen right here. And Marshall will throw for the second time into the end zone. Tipped. Nice and job by Swan. It sure was. Incomplete. You so. can tell it's it's they just love Uzuma matched up against the smaller corners. Whether it's the fade pass this time, it's the stop to the outside as Swan does a beautiful job on the play. Uzuma replaced the graduated senior, Philip Lutzenkirchen, who is present at the game today. Damian Swan made a great player there. That's a tough matchup. Uzuma was a high school quarterback, wide receiver, kind of grown into a hybrid tight end. And the field goal, high snap, nice hold. Ryan White did a magnificent job to get that ball controlled and down. And the laces turned. So. The first quarter is in the history books and making his 51st consecutive start. Aaron Murray will be on the field when we return. Airlines. Three nothing Auburn after taking 16 plays to go 56 yards. Season highs for both time consumed on a drive and number of plays in a drive. Cody Parkey will kick off. Sheldon Dawson, number two, is the deep man, and there will be no return on this one. And now for the Chick fil A starting runners. The starter from Tampa, Florida. Holds three all-time career marks in the SEC now. And this season, 2,477 yards, 20 touchdowns, seven intercepts, with three games remaining. I think he's the best timing thrower in college football. He understands the offense inside out, and he can get rid of the ball before the receiver's open. It'll be a challenge for Auburn to slow down his timing routes. And also with that guy standing next to him. Yeah. <laughs> And here is the first mention during the game of Todd Gurley. And guess what? <laughs> Offensively for the Bulldogs, they come in six and three. Gates, Lee, Andrews, Burnett, Theus, Merritt Hall will start. Arthur Lynch suffered bruised ribs two weeks ago in the Georgia-Florida game, missed last week. He is a starter again. And you saw Michael Bennett and Rantavius Wooten, the wideouts. Bennett. Slot to the top of the screen. Murray hit and dropped and fumbled. D Ford. Remember that number. That's the number. The last time we saw Auburn, he was doing it at Texas A&M. He finished off that game and he starts this game right around the corner. Holy cow! Right through John Theus. Yes. And that is his eighth of the season. The Georgia tackles must hold up on third down and passing situations. Watch out. Almost picked off. It was behind Gurley. Well, that's and it was speed Ford coming up again. Now, excuse me, Bernard. I barely can hear you. It's so loud in here. That speed coming off the edge. 
And as loud as it is, the offensive tackles for Georgia are not getting off at the snap count. They're getting beat by the Auburn defensive ends. Amazing. And special teams have been a problem for Georgia this year. Snaps, block kicks, kick returns. Here's Colin Barber back. Remember in the Vandy loss, they put one over his head. The deep man, Chris Davis, there's a flag down. At the point of the punt. I think it was Ryan Smith that came across the leg. Yeah, looks that way. There is a flag. Now we'll determine whether what Georgia will do with the call. Well, the crowd is reaction, reacting rather. Running into the kicker. Number 24. The receiving team. The penalty declined. First down. I think it's. Yeah. <laughs> He, that was nice acting on the play and you could see Mark Rick play it a bit conservative and decided to take a 43 yard punt now remember you get a five yard penalty and it would have to be a 38 yarder to get tied I, I was surprised he didn't try it one more time penalty declined time called Auburn's got it back A year ago at this time, Auburn was 2-8, and eight, fired the coach, brought back Gus Malzahn, who served as the offensive coordinator here for three years. Looks kind of back to the future. It really does. Really, it's the same offense they ran in 2010, and this time it's Nick Marshall for number two, Cam Newton. Same plays. The running back in 2010, it was number five, Michael Dyer. Now it's number 21. Same place, pulling guard to the middle. And the speed sweep, it was Ontario McCaleb in 2010. Now it's Corey Grant. Same place. Take your offense, find new weapons, and run what you know. That's been the key to the success, success for Gus Malzahn. You know, I'm always impressed when you decline our invitation <laughs> to come out to dinner on Friday night, <laughs> and you do room service, and you come up with this kind of well, thing. Well, yeah. I, uh, <laughs> we had a lot of help. A lot of people helped us on that one. First down and 10. Caught Uzuma. Hit from behind and tackled, but a big gain. And a, and a late flag. I'm not exactly sure who it was on. It might have been. Was it pay, uh, blocking downfield on the play? Uh, let's see. Not there. exactly sure what happened. Uzuma made a nice catch because it was well defended by Trey Matthews that time. And then Trey Matthews did catch up. Let's see. I wonder if they called it on Sammy Coates blocking downfield. We're Might have been Tom holding. Bray. Number four yeah. on offense. Ten yard penalty. It was the receiver at the top of the field. Uh, uh, Sammy Coates, number 18, ran into it, but just under the CBS mark right there. You can see the jersey being pulled by Quan Bray. Good call on Shag Wiggins. And it's first down and two. Substitutions late now for the Auburn offense. Dangerous play action situation here now for the Georgia defense. Marcus Davis, number 80, is on the field in the slot. One of two. Marshall. Leonard Floyd almost got him. And he fouled. Marcus Davis, the freshman, for so long that number worn by Emery Blake. Well, pressure was applied inside, and I think it was Floyd that made the pressure, but Nick Marshall pops outside and makes another good throw. He can throw the ball. They just don't throw the ball that often. There's a quick snap. 
Passing offense, 173 yards. They're 12th in the SEC, but only three completions last week. That's the fewest in a win since 1985. Second down, seven. Marshall will throw again. He's got him. Sammy Coates. Marshall's pass to number 18, Sammy Coates. He does lead the country in yards per catch. Yes, he's had four 100-yard games this season. And you can see he's a big-time matchup problem. And, you know, Fern, there's a big difference between a team that can't throw and a team that chooses not to throw. The team that chooses to throw when they want to are very dangerous. That's where Auburn is. They're choosing their spots, and it's very difficult to stop. And they'll throw again, perhaps. Well, Marshall will tuck it and scoot out of bounds in front of Ronique Wilson, number 51. Marshall 6 for 21 now. Mason has 7 carries for 23. Quan Bray, top of the screen. Melvin Ray. You got Bray and Ray out there. And here we go. Corey Grant. Touchdown, Auburn. Well, this is Ontario McCaleb. Oh, excuse me. Corey Grant coming on this sweep right here. And that's the third part of what you can almost call the triple option. It's an inverted beer. It looks like at least Auburn is lining up, threatening to go for two. But it is really a dynamic offense without pitching the ball. They run the ball at the point of attack without blocking the end man line of scrimmage, and they mesmerize them with guards, H-backs, handoffs, and quarterbacks. It's a really beautiful offense to watch. They do go for one on the try. Grant, the speedster, it in was, the three-pronged attack. Yes, it was the transfer from Georgia handing off to the transfer from Alabama that scores a touchdown for Auburn. Auburn has dominated here in the first quarter. They're up 10-0. And now it's time to take a look at our Home Depot tools for success, Gary. Well, this offense is put together well, but there are some hidden parts sometimes when you look at this offense. Herrera right here is the guy that they're going to try to block. It's a tough block, but watch the hidden part right here. Jay Prosh, number 35, is right there. He arc blocks on the play. He's the H-back, cleans it. A good block by Brandon Foles, and there's that clap right there. You got guys lined up, and with the action, with the speed sweep, two good blocks, and they crease it. Look at the comparison this year to last. Now Zahn chose to leave Auburn and uh, was the head coach at Arkansas State last year for one season. Gus spent much of his career in high school ball as a head coach in Arkansas. Cody Parker will kick, Parkey will kick off. And Sheldon Dawson is the deep man. Touchback again. Now let's go back to the studio for a Liberty Mutual Insurance update. You're looking very good for George O'Leary with that three-point come from behind win. Burn back to you. All right, Tim, indeed they are. And it's first down 10 and a flag. First substitution. Georgia. 12 minute formation. Five yard penalty. First down. When you huddle with 12, you're gonna call it on you. Very interesting. Georgia started out with three wide receivers, one back. No success, so they come back to the fullback. You can see there's Michael Bennett, who did not get the word that it was two wide receivers and not three wide receivers. This will be the fourth play for Georgia in the ball game. They give it to Gurley. He breaks the first contact. Defensively for the Auburn Tigers. 
They will rotate 10 defensive linemen. Ford, Igwe, Wright, and Owens will start. McKenzie, Holland, and Therese. And Gabe Wright had a chance to chat with him yesterday, one of the leaders of this defense for the Auburn Tigers. Four minutes to go, first quarter, 10 nothing. Screen behind Gurley. Well, Todd Gurley missed three and three quarters ball games. He was injured in the game against LSU. He had run for 73 yards in the first quarter. High ankle sprain. We saw him two weeks ago against Florida. Obviously not in the best of shape. No, and when he's touching the ball, Georgia has been very good. I mean, they, they, they have been their most dynamic when he's a part of the offense, obviously. But, you know, even in the first game against Clemson, he had to go out for parts of that game, too. Murray will run, but not very far. Fourth down. Well, I don't know. I don't know if I want my quarterback hit in this type of a game this early. Back-to-back -back three and outs. You have to have Aaron Murray healthy for this team, I think, to win this game. That was not going to have any chance of picking up a quarterback draw. Auburn was clearly in a zone defense, letting everything happen in front of him. Chris Davis had a punt return against Tennessee. He's back now to accept oh, beautiful punts. Colin Barber's punt. This is a good one. Davis can't get very far. Great punt, great coverage by Georgia. That has to lift their spirits. See more of today's game with the All-22 camera angle exclusively on CBSSports.com. Watch all of the action live now at CBSSports.com slash SEC. Well, what do you do if you're Georgia? You know, the first drive was uh, 15 plays or 16 plays, whatever it was, scouting the thing. 13 of them were runs. Last drive, six plays, but five of them were passes. Uh, you know, what we got, that's really tough now. They've established both. Cross to fullback, draw play. Mason with his eighth carry of the ball game, Trey. With a thousand yards for the second consecutive season, chatted with him yesterday about his attempt to cross a thousand in a 49 nothing defeat to Alabama last year. And he did get it, a thousand and two yards, but he said he also heard about it from the Alabama defenders. Second and seven. Here's Prosh, number 35. Talked about uh, Gus Malzahn and his years in high school. His offensive coordinator is Rhett Lashley. He just turned 30 last summer. He was a quarterback for Malzahn at Shiloh Christian High School. So their relationship goes all the way back to that stop. He was a GA at Arkansas when Malzahn was the offensive coordinator, came here as a GA in 09 with Nelson. And now, someday he's going to be a head coach. Third and four. Oh, not a very good throw. No, it wasn't. They got him. Oh. Look, they called oh. it complete. They called it a completed pass. Uh, Herrera disagrees. Yes, he does. Had him wide open. It was not a very good throw. I don't know if he got that or not. Don't believe so. I don't even know if Davis thinks he got it, to tell you the truth. <laughs> Incomplete. Yeah, they that don't ball have to bounced. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Davis knew he did not catch that ball. Look at him sheepishly look around and say, uh, yeah. if, I, if I get away with this one, it'll be a miracle. And this will, should force a punt. Fourth and four. Stephen Clark is the punter for the Auburn Tigers. Kind of a remarkable stat. He hasn't punted all that much this year, but of the number of punts, gosh, he looks like an old man, doesn't he? Uh, all right, I'm going to try to get one for one on these reviews, okay? okay? All right. I think this one's going to be incomplete. I'm pretty confident on this. <laughs> I hope there's a few more I get my average No, I, I like your <laughs> sense of self-confidence. You, know, you <laughs> stepped out right there. here. 
So they are reviewing this. So what do you do if you're Mike Bobo now? You're getting this football back. You clearly are having a problem protecting the quarterback. You, you know, had a penalty, self-destructed a little bit, first and 15. Georgia needs a clean series here. This shouldn't take very long. That's further to you. Yep. The ruling is confirmed. And so, fourth and four. Two sacks on the first series, a penalty on the second series. Right now, Georgia needs it clean. They take their chances not shooting themselves in the foot and getting off at least one first down here. And just to complete the stat on Stephen Clark, of his punts this year, 38 of them, only four have been returned. Georgia has kept their defense safe on the field. Rhett McGowan deep, fair catch. Well, they called a flag on it. Had it be a first down on defensive save. I don't know what to think of. I don't. I think you might not be able to leap over the blockers. Personal foul, number 94 on the receiving team. Leaping the protection shield, 15 yard penalty. First down. That's a mental mistake, a big time mental mistake by John Taylor. Georgia goes safe. They're just inviting, you can see it, right in the middle of it. And John Taylor said gets a little too anxious. I don't know if he leaped very high. Not. And you could see that it was called by the Auburn the defender. Yes, he did jump though. There's no doubt it's a dangerous play and they're trying to get that out of football because if Taylor got flipped, he would land on his head and that would be very dangerous. And so after the Markoff, it's a first down 10. Mason into the set. Oh, it's uh, Corey Grant, beg your pardon. Corey Grant is usually Mr. Outside in this offense, but started the year sharing a lot of the ca uh, carries with Trey Mason and Cameron Artis Payne, but Mason kind of won the job and deserved more of the carries. Grant remains on the field. And he'll get it. Comes around the left side, pushed out of bounds by Ramik Wilson, number 51. Well, they do have a three-pong running attack here. And early in the year, it was all three of them being featured, but about the LSU game, Trey Mason distanced himself. Corey Grant and Cameron Artis Payne are now really the backups and used in different roles. And a first down 10, final minute, first quarter. Absolutely dominated you know, the plays. I mean, it's 26 to six plays, two three and outs for a first quarter for this just dynamic Georgia offense. It's hard to believe. Mason back on the field. So take a look at the season numbers. Mason now well over a thousand yards, second year in a row. Grant with 537. Cameron Artis Payne, number 44, with 568. 16 touchdowns for Mason. That's tops in the SEC, and that will also bring to a close the first quarter of play. And it was AA all Auburn. That's the end of the first. 10 nothing. Auburn will return to Auburn after this message and a word from your local station. I know it was, it was almost too quick to notice, but that was really Gary on the pogo yeah. stick. <laughs> <laughs> Got it, set a record. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Well, welcome back to Jordan Hare Stadium, Auburn, Alabama. Vern Lundquist, Gary Danielson, Tracy Wilson, our entire crew here for the first time. Watch out for the quick snap when they huddle close like that. They get out there real quick. All righty, second down second eight at the, the Georgia 39. 39. Here they come. New quarterback. Goes deep. Got him. 
Jeremy Johnson, the true freshman, in, and he gets one play, and he's out. But it was a nice play. Very nice one. Came in for a three-point shot. Remember, he gave up his red shirt season when Nick Marshall hurt his shoulder. Got him a win, and then every win counts for Auburn on their great season, and uh, Gus has promised to keep him involved in the game plan. Here's the handoff to Mason. Uh, nice job picking his way through there. And Mason down near the 20. Well, a variety of things to, to explore here. What do you want to talk about? Well, I, I think, first of all, there's been a lot of red flags, but to me, the biggest is the offensive tackle has not handled the speed rush for Auburn. I mean, that could be a big problem for as Aaron Murray tries to make his impact in this game. If I'm Mike Bobo, I'm going, what do I do? Do I have to keep in another guy? Do I have to get a chip with the tight end? That could be a big problem in the football game. Time has been called. Gus Malzahn doesn't seem real happy right now. Don't know why. His team's dominating. Miami. Back to Vern Gary and Tracy at Jordan Hill. All right, Tim, thank you. A sea of orange here, 87,000 on hand. There's a small pocket of red, but almost uh, erased from the visual. And these orange-clad Auburn Tigers are having a great afternoon so far. Yeah, well, you know, uh, it's hard to believe we're, you know, into the second quarter here, and Auburn has thrown more passes than Georgia has run plays. Wow. That's the second one today. Second and five. Ball at the 20. Can Georgia get a tackle for a loss or a negative play? That's what they need very badly. Marshall gets a couple. Leonard Floyd, number 84, with the uh, Bulldog tackle. Yeah, and he stayed at home that time. That's his job. That's his assignment. And that's that long, athletic, defensive end, outside linebacker that needs to make those plays. Great play by Floyd. Third down four. Third down four. It's a big part of this football game for Georgia. Forcing a field goal here would be a big win for the team. flips it out. Corey Grant, it'll be fourth down. Now this drive was kept alive on a fourth down earlier with a punt and a leaping penalty called on Georgia. Damian Swan again did a great job in the flat. He did not bail out of the play. He played the short flat, came up, knew where the help was, and forced the ball carrier back into the tackle. Beautiful job. Wilson had help on the outside. That was great defense by Georgia. Played a zone, stuck with the zone, and forced a short throw. That brings on Cody Parker, Parkey, who is uh, one for one in this one. Kicked one from 22. This one is good from 35. That is see, excuse me, Vernon. You're going to see a lot of clapping on that Georgia sideline right now as Mark Rick and the coaching staff is going to try to get them pepped up for the remainder of the second quarter in game. CBS Sports coverage of the Home Depot SEC continues after this word from your local station. As you all know, the Philippines have been devastated by Typhoon Haiyan. Thousands have lost their lives and there's been massive property damage. The victims urgently need your help. Please visit the redcross.org that's redcross.org to make a donation. CBS cares. Total number of plays thus far in the game, 31 for the Auburn Tigers, six for Georgia, back-to-back -back three and outs. But they did get the stop inside the red zone and forced a field goal. Sheldon Dawson is the deep man. Parkey has kicked two of them through the end zone, make it three. And let's go down to Tracy Wolfson. Well, guys, Georgia's offense doing nothing so far, and Aaron Murray went over to his offensive lineman before taking the field and said, let's pick it up a little bit. Let's play a little faster. They are certainly not known as an up-tempo team, but let's see if they try to go a little faster here to get something going, guys. And Tracy, Michael Bennett is back in the game. I think they're going to go back to the, to the wide spread out thing and try to throw the ball more. They've got to loosen up to be able to run Gurley. They've got to spread it out, that Auburn defense, because they're geared in on Todd Gurley. Gurley is uh, the deep back. 
Play action. Murray rolls to his right. He's got Arthur Lynch. Going, but he's got Bennett deep. Yep. And here is Michael Bennett. Cuts down and is tackled by Jonathan Jones, number three. But by far the best of seven plays now for Georgia in the ball. Well, you can almost see this coming. You have to figure out a way to throw the ball. You just get an easy crossing route off the play action pass. You know Auburn is geared in to stop Todd Gurley. You got to find a way to throw the ball. And the quick hitter from Gurley. And that should open up the game to get Todd Gurley back into the football game because Auburn had it mesmerized on them and beat into them all week that we got to stop number three. Second and three. Murray goes right. It's tipped. And it's caught by Gurley. Good play. <laughs> wow. D. Ford tipped it. D. Ford has been a monster so far in this game, hasn't he? They put Houston in the game, number 75, but it was a different blocking combination that time. A quick pass, and the line just kind of folded down. Nobody blocked Ford. John Theus is out. He had been beaten twice for sacks. Third down three. There's Ford off the back quick. He gets to Murray, but the pass is complete to Jonathan Rump. There is a flag. Runner's pass, number 18, Jonathan Rump. There's a flag. Yeah, I think he was off sides anyway, was Ford on the play. He just anticipated it. Beat Houston around the end, and I really thought he was trying to hold Murray up. That was not your typical Nick Fairley drive him into the ground type deal. That we saw here a couple of years ago. When uh, we were here. Practice that has continued Outside. for Nick Fairley. <laughs> 30 on defense. Penalty to find. There's all the plays, the better option. First down. I really thought he was trying to hold him up and just kind of lost his balance on the play. It is the second consecutive first down for the Bulldogs. And they are inside the 20 for the first time. Blitz. Flag. Words. False start. 75. Offense. Five yard penalty. Well, three years ago, Gary and I and Tracy were here. Nick Fairley had an interesting game. Yeah. Aaron Murray, his freshman year, and Dick Fairley was making a name for himself in a lot of ways. <laughs> and Aaron Murray, two of those, I think it was one of those a penalty, and two of them weren't. The first and the second, the last were not. The middle one was a penalty. First down of 15, Michael Bennett again in the slot. Blitz threatened yet again. They back out. It's four-man rush. Almost got to him again. And it's overthrown, intended for Bennett, and defended by Ryan Smith, number 24. Well, you can see that Aaron Murray, in his mind, he has his clock ticking. He knows he cannot hold it too long. He feels that his offensive line has a challenge, and he's letting the ball go very quickly. Second 15, see what Auburn has in mind defensively. Murray looks over to the bench. Jonathan Rump, number 18, is at the top of the screen. Rantavius Wooten at the bottom. They hand it off to Gurley on the draw. Up the middle, he runs. You, he's spectacular when he gets the football and he has some space. Great block that time by Merritt Hall. Gets into the secondary and, you know, makes it 30 inches. And on the quick count, inside the 10. It appears he got it. Well, last year, both Todd Gurley and Keith Marshall went over 100 yards against Auburn when they routed him in this football game. So Auburn knows all about number three. Chris Conley is on the field for the first time in a couple of weeks. Number 31, 
High ankle sprain for him. Here's Gurley again. Touchdown, Georgia. Well, it was a great first call of the series by Mike Bobo. The play action pass, and that broke the dam to be able to run that guy. He's number three. I said it three times. They better stop Gurley. They better stop Gurley. They better stop Gurley because if Murray has some help, it will be tough to keep this down at scoring points. The extra point from Marshall Morgan is good. Mike Bobo, of course, the longtime offensive coordinator, former quarterback at Georgia, and a key member of Mark Rick's staff. Eight plays, 75 yards, just under three minutes, and it featured Todd Gurley. He runs right through Chris Frost on the play. That's how valuable one of those backs are. He can beat the linebacker in the hole and score. Back to Vernon Garrett. Did I miss some mention of Johnny Manziel there? Well, <laughs> they have an he, open. He's going to. He's yeah, going to have his, tur his yeah. turn coming up. Uh, let's see uh, the strategy for the Georgia. Special teams now. Remember the great field position on the pooch kickoff to start the game. I, I think you got to challenge it and kick it deep. You can't give the spot to team the ball at the 40 yard line. Two men back for Auburn. Quan Bray and Trey Mason. Marshall Morgan will kick off. And this time they do boom it reasonably deep. It will be returned from the four by Trey Mason. Mason has a 100-yard kickoff return in the opener this year. And now for the uh, Affleck trivia question, who finished second behind Herschel Walker in 82 and Bo Jackson in 85 in their respective Heisman winning seasons? Walker, of course, one of the greatest players in Georgia history. The same could be said of Jackson here in Auburn. There is a player down. It's Sheldon Dawson. Oh, looks like he's maybe I got a cut there. They're fixing him up, huh? Dawson, the backup cornerback. That appears to be where it happened. Whatever it was, time called. Georgia Auburn and on the bench Sheldon Dawson appeared to have suffered a cut lip on the kickoff return. Auburn is back on offense. Gary, you've talked about the multiple parts of this offense. Sure. Well, let's go back a couple games. I grabbed this play from the Arkansas game. Watch Trey Mason score right up the middle in a five-yard touchdown run. It looks easy. Well, how did it get so open? Where did those linebackers go? It's part of the reason this motion goes. The linebackers are pulled out of the middle. The eye discipline necessary for those inside linebackers, it's like a magician. You can't watch the left hand when the right hand is actually pulling the trick. The linebackers, the discipline necessary to play against these offense, it's called eye discipline, and it's mandatory to cut the window dressing out and concentrate on your rules. They have done fairly well, as you saw in the SEC. Here's a quick flip, Marshall. Back to Ricardo Lewis, number five. And he spins and might have spun. Oh, fumble. Who got it? Well, Georgia thinks they got it. They That's sure for do. Sure. They're getting a lot of encouragement from the sideline. There's a classic Mark Rick looking down, pointing out. Little tug at the bottom of the pile. Well, if you're trying to read Mark Rick's face, that isn't going to help. He does not change expression. No, no, no. Classic. Oh, wow. It looks like. Watch out. Be careful. I'll tell you, Josh Carvey Clemens thought he had the ball. Well, he does now. He sure does, but I think, are they calling it simultaneous possession? Here's Penn Wagers, oh, now, and now, now 
we can read it. Now we can read it because remember, now right now Mark Rick is going. He's thinking about all the injuries. He's thinking about the Vanderbilt game. He's had about enough of those strike guys in front of him. And they just threw a flag on Rick. Really on the field was a fumble from player was on the ball and had possession of it. It's a first down. Unsportsmanlike conduct on the Georgia bench. 15 yards, first down. Uh, Mark Rick's about had it with the officially this year. He, in his heart, believes that a bad call cost him the Vanderbilt game. The ball is clearly out. And Josh Harvey Clemens caused it and thought he had it. Whoa. Will this light a fire under Georgia? Sure has with their coach, hasn't it? Yeah, so placid until the call was ultimately made. Now there's some confusion. All right, Mark Rick came very close to bumping the official. Jeremy Johnson is the quarterback, the true freshman. Right side, Corey Grant. And let's take another look at Mark Rick, who lost his sense of composure. Wagers through the flag. That is accumulation of a whole season of frustration right there. At a first down and 10. Mason still going. Driving with those strong legs. Trey Mason, number 21, and Rick still upset. Auburn will go faster and faster when they're successful on first down. You gain five, six, seven yards, they're going at you again. Marshall. And they like to repeat plays. That was the same play as the one previous, only this time Nick Marshall kept, kept the ball. They could run the same play again. Eight carries, 33 yards for Marshall now. First down, 10 at the 20. Mason. Same play again. That's by Damian Swan. That's a gain of 14, first and goal at the six. Intensity, he wanted to make a substitution change, but he's rolling them faster and faster. Marshall again. Marshall's touchdown for the Auburn Tigers. in college football that even comes close to this offense and having five or six or seven base plays and running at the pace they run. It is something he's been running since he was a high school coach and he can dial it up fast. Extra point on Nick Marshall who started his collegiate career for the Georgia Bulldogs scores from six yards out. The closest comparison I can make is Georgia Tech Army, Air Force, Navy, they run the same play over and over again, and they have different options off of the play. Whether they give, whether they keep, or whether they have the quarterback follow the guard right up the middle like they did on the last one. This was a zone read, follow 35. Frosch had nobody even to block that time. It was Frosch, the fullback, who led the way. Gotcha. Key play of that drive was this fumble. Ricardo Lewis and Josh Harvey Clemens. It was ruled an Auburn recovery, even though Clemens, Harvey Clemens came out of that pile with the ball, and that set Mark Rick free. He was flagged for unsportsmanlike on the bench. Just peering as they unstacked the bodies, he was completely calm and then Boom. Yeah, he, he was yelling at side judge, then Penn Wagers, the referee, is the guy that actually came over and threw the flag. So the kickoff from Auburn, they've had three touchbacks so far. J.J. Green is the deep back this time. And that's four for four for Cody Parkey. My goodness. 
Georgia clawed back with Gurley's help on the previous possession for the Bulldogs. Well, you know, we've talked about this throughout the year where sometimes the coach looks at his veteran quarterback and goes, I don't know if we could stop him much. you got to have a game for me today. I need you to put 40 points on the board or we're not going to win. And here's Murray. He's 2-1 and one in his career against Auburn. Gurley, nothing. Montave, Montrevious, Adams. And for more on Aaron Murray, let's go down to Tracy Wolfson. Well, guys, Aaron Murray was being attended to on the sideline. It looks as though it was some bleeding on the finger. It's a pretty severe cut, but no Band-Aid on it right now. But he was also trying to pull it out. It's like he jammed it. He was throwing more than usual down here on the sideline. Just something to keep an eye on, guys. Second down and 10. And that is his throwing hand, obviously. Into the flat, and that's going to be penalty. a motion penalty on the left tackle. Canarius Gates, number 72. And that's the factor of this Ball crowd. Start. 72, offense, five-yard penalty. Early it was Theus, now it's Gates with the loud crowd here. Those tackles have the toughest job to try to get off on the snap count, handle those quick defensive ends, and still not get off late, because late just as bad as early. Second down 15, as you see, that's the fifth Georgia penalty. Bennett and Chris Conley are both to the left side. It's Bennett in the slot. Handed off to Gurley, he is stuffed. Anthony Swain. We mentioned they'll rotate 10 defensive linemen in. That was Swain, the outside linebacker, helping out. And there. Uh, they're no better team that substitutes on the run than Auburn because they practice it every day against this hurry up in practice. Swain, whether he's playing outside linebacker, defensive end, all those guys roll through. Third and 15. This has been dangerous ground for Georgia in this ballgame. D Ford, and they get it to Gurley. But he stopped well shy of the first down. That's yeah, about a yard, less than a yard. I don't know if it's oh, well. Oh, is it? I'm yeah. sorry. I looked at the wrong yard yeah. line. There you go. It well, is a yard. It's a decision time here. Punny well, unit comes out. I'm actually a little surprised. I wonder if Mark Rick has a fake here. The way his defense has not been holding up, I got to think about going for this. It's less than a yard. It's a yard. Colin Barber is the punter. Chris Davis is the deep man. Special teams were huge last week. Not a good punt. And you thought last night special teams would be significant really in this did. game. It's a dis demoralizing part for Georgia because they've had so much happen to them in special teams. Gus Malzahn was telling his team, if we can win special teams, we can demoralize them even more. This was worse than a bad punt. It was a horrific punt. That's a 23-yard effort. Over the course of the season, the special teams for Georgia have suffered eight catastrophic plays that's defined as any play which results in a score or leads directly to a score Eight. Mark, Mark Rick really needs his defense to get a stop here because remember they get the ball to start the second half a stop here a two-minute drive by Murray to make it a football game that's Trey Mason again and uh, Garrison Smith a little angry number 56 doesn't result in anything meaningful. 5.44 to go, first half, 20 to 7. There's the senior Aaron Murray. Marshall looked like a lateral. Nevertheless, Ricardo Lewis makes the grab. How, How about that wrinkle? Yeah. It's probably the fourth option off the play. Fake it inside. Will you keep it? Last, the long pitch to the outside. And a first down. First down, 10. 
Mason again inside the 40. Well, let's go back and answer the Aflac trivia question for the week. Who finished? <laughs> That's a nice Heisman move. Who finished second between Walker, John Elway in 82, Chuck Long of Iowa in 85? Marshall, not much doing. Oh, no, my goodness. Oh, wow. Pull it down. I think he ran right through Ray Drew, didn't he? He did, yes. That's number 47. That's a 260-pound man he ran through. And then Sterling Bailey, number 58. It's oh a gain of 18. My goodness. Mason, inside the 20, revisit the Nick Marshall run. Well, Nick Marshall was actually recruited by more teams at the defensive back than a quarterback. In fact, Auburn didn't even recruit uh, Nick Marshall as a quarterback. Georgia did for a while and then switched it to defensive back. He was considering playing basketball and football at Georgia. Second down, eight. Marshall did play all 13 games in 2011 as a DB for the Bulldogs. Timeout called by Auburn. That's their second timeout call. They've got one left. I mean, they're close, to, pretty close to 200 yards rushing in the first half. And would you like to guess what play they're going to run next? <laughs> I have no idea. Nick Marshall's longest run of this game, that last one for 18 yards. And go back to 2011, this particular encounter. Number 27 is Nick Marshall. Yeah, kind of tackles like a quarterback, though, on that play. <laughs> well, what a circuitous route he took to get here. He was dismissed from the Georgia team by Mark Rick in February 2012 for his complicity, which he admitted as a part of a break-in of a teammate's dorm room. Dismissed from the team. Three days later, his high school coach drove him five hours to Birmingham. That was Mark Ledford. They handed him off, uh, put him in a car driven by the Garden City, Kansas Community College Bronkbusters football team. <laughs> that was a 15-hour drive to Garden City, Kansas. Marshall was there for one year. Said it came down to Kansas State or Auburn and uh, his relationship with Gus Malzahn, who'd recruited him at Arkansas State, wound up being. And, and Damian Craig, too. Don't yep. overlook that. Damian Craig was at Florida State and he was recruiting him there. And he, when he was also here, that was a, a probably sealed. And I think also a chance to come back into the SEC might have been the, the, a part of it as well. I thought it's remarkable Zach Mettenberger had the same circuitous route to his role at LSU, dismissed by Rick. And came Todd Grantham that time came with the blitz from the outside attack this offense man Josh Harvey Clemens was the guy coming off the field blitz matter of fact as, as, as long as we're talking about redemption for quarterbacks a guy named Cam Newton was dismissed right from the Florida team went to Blinn Junior College in Texas and wound up here third and eight here comes again Another one, it looks like very aggressive. Uzuma split to the right side. Marshall goes deep left side. Incomplete. It was intended for Sammy Coates and Damian Swan. Made a nice defensive play. Well, the veteran Damian Swan has had a good football game. Georgia has not given up a touchdown pass on the last three football games. And Swan has been responsible for a couple. Those are tough matchups. Coates, Nuzumar are both tough matchups. Another good stop to stay alive in the game and give Aaron Murray a chance to get the ball twice here in a row. Cody End of the Park. first half, excuse me, Vernon, yep. the beginning of the second half. Cody Parkey is two for two. This is from 36. Blocked. How about that? Blocked. The build on the tenth block. Looked like it was Chris Mays, Sterling Baby, look, uh, Bailey. Push inside. Well, it didn't seem like he got a lot of elevation on that kick, did it? Mm -hmm. 
Well, not exactly. Was it Floyd again? It was. <laughs> yeah. Leonard Floyd. Leonard Floyd. Six foot five is the guy who got the one from there. Here's now Georgia again with three minutes to go in the half. You got a four-year quarterback. Oh, another penalty by Georgia. It's going to be first and 15. Ball start. 75. Offense. That right tackle yards. spot has been first disastrous. And it sure has. Two sacks. Two penalties. That was Colton Houston who replaced John Pius back in the first quarter. Yeah, they've gone back and forth the whole game. They've tried them both. Murray across the middle. Caught. Tight end Arthur Lynch. Number 88. Well, let's give the credit to that offensive line on this one because Aaron Murray hung in there a long time waiting for Aaron Lynch to come to the middle of the field. He does. He crosses right behind the linebacker, and Murray stays in the pocket and makes the throw big time by that offensive line. Artie Lynch missed the last game because of sore ribs. His backup, Jay Rome, is out of this game with a foot injury. First and 10. From the backside, intercepted. Picked off by Ryan Smith. Is it D Ford again? Number 30 that came in and got the pressure from Aaron Murray around the backside. It was from Murray's right side. That's what caused the long throw. Let's see who it was. Yes, it was. What a football game that man is having. Right around the outside, turns the corner, and gets the corner inside out. Two of them. Gabe Wright, I think, was also inside grabbing his ankles. And from the backside at the same time, and the ball sailed on Murray. Felt the pressure inside and overthrew Michael Bennett. Ryan White, Ryan Smith, I beg your pardon, picks off his third interception of the season. On the sweep, Ricardo Lewis. You know, Mark Rick had to be feeling good. His defense got to stop. They blocked the field goal. You put your quarterback out there. Then you make a mistake. He still picks up the first down. He's looking at the clock and going, oh, my gosh. We could get back in this football game, make a 20 to 14, get the ball back, and all of a sudden, interception. This is Trey Mason. Got unexpectedly quiet here for a moment there. Yes. Kind of the wing T type stuff, ball handle there. That's eye discipline we talked about. The speed sweep. Georgia does a good job of plugging those lanes inside. Second right. down five. Vern, right now, 19 first downs in this game. Georgia has 19 plays. Mm. Aubrey comes into this game as the third highest first down team in the country. Army and Navy are first and second. Back to the left, it's Ricardo Lewis. Breaks the block of Shaq Wiggins, or the tackle, rather. And uh, Ricardo Lewis, who replaced Quan Bray in the starting lineup today. Well, the last drive was helped on missed tackles. Remember when Nick Marshall broke that play, and this time Shaq Williams does not come up with the tackle and makes it third and short. It would have been third and at least five or six yards. Trey Matthews injured. Remember, he's been hampered by a pulled hamstring for uh, the middle part of the season, the last four games or so. Yeah, I think he, it, it's something with his mouth again. Same as Sheldon Dawson. Right oh, there. He took it yeah, to right yeah. in the chin, didn't he? Stands up, runs over. He's walking back, and feels realized, some blood. Yeah, exactly. He's going to walk off, and then at that point, the Georgia coaches say, don't come off. We could use a break. You could see he could just walk five more feet, and the Georgia coach said, no, 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 just stay right there. Down. Well, the Geico halftime report is coming up. As soon as we reach halftime, back to the studio for Tim. Spencer and Bryant, they'll catch you up on all the things going on here as we near 
the latter part of this 2013 season. 27 is the score. Third and one. And Sheldon Dawson already on the bench with a cut lip on a kickoff. Now Trey Matthews. crowd quiet for the moment SEC West this was at the beginning of the day Alabama of course undefeated ranked first in the BCS standings they play at Mississippi State tonight Auburn very much alive in this control their own destiny and then the Aggies still mathematically alive they're open this week and they host or they go to LSU next week third and one Matthews, uh, Mason. First and ten. They're going to take Trey Matthews into the locker room before the rest of the team gets in there. Marshall elects to keep it. Inside the five. Gain of 13. Inside the 25 yard line on that play. Nice run to the edge. You know, Cam Newton and Nick Marshall obviously both very effective. Cam almost immeasurably different than everybody else. Cam into power. Nick Marshall in the space and touchdown. Nice ball. Wow. Just pull the guard around, hand the ball off. This was a called play. Mason for the TD from 24 yards out. This one was not a read. This was give foul. Number 62, Chad Slade, and number 35, Jake Roche. It's almost like having another lineman in the backfield. Extra point up and good. <laughs> And the lead is 20 with 107 to go. This is what makes this offense unique. It's the power out of the spread. Watch this. Pull and follow and gash him. What a jet block by Pro. I think you got Herrera again. Trey Mason now with 99 yards on 20 carries. The Tigers are roaring. Trey Mason having a big first half. Let's take a look from the Chick-fil-A action cam of that last touchdown. Watch the angles that are created. The center, block down, block down, creates that wall, kick out, and then number 35 leads. Watch the angles created by this play. A wall inside, Herrera overruns it, easy block from Proch, and you gash him. Everybody leaning outside because of all those sweeps, and all of a sudden you gash him with a power play inside. Those were all easy blocks, all angles created by the design of the offense. 50 first half plays for Auburn. Back. That's five for five. Trey Mason. We all had a chance to spend uh, 25, 30 minutes with him yesterday. And uh, a really delightful young man. Looks you right in the eye. Strong handshake. And look at this. 17 touchdowns. Now, his father, Vincent, by the way, is a member of the rap group, De La Soul. I have a lot of their music on my iPod. <laughs> and he told us his dad was, the band was playing in Brazil last week. First and 10, Auburn leads by 20, Murray's back. Across to Gurley, yeah, a little bit. Georgia does have two timeouts left. And now one, they just took one. Ah, there we go. Well, when you dominate a team like Auburn for two years the way Georgia has, 
You got to believe Auburn has circled this game, and they didn't want want to look ahead. I mean, you got to know they're thinking, oh, if we can get to that Alabama game, but I'm sure they've been warned all week. We got one we owe Georgia first, then we can kind of concentrate on Alabama. Oh. Now the current SEC standings, East standings, Missouri. 5-1, South Carolina holds the tiebreaker over Missouri because of their overtime victory. Georgia needs to win this and needs some help. Here's the scenario for the East. Missouri now 5-1, and one, and you see they win a three-way tiebreak and a two-way tiebreak with Georgia. They won at Athens earlier this year. Second down and five. That's Jonathan Rump, number 18, and back to the scenario to settle the representative from the East in Atlanta. South Carolina wins a two-way tiebreak with Missouri. They take on Florida tonight. And Georgia, as we mentioned, needs to win here and needs some help. Gurley out of bounds. Chased there by Chris Davis. That stops the clock. 41 seconds. I think it's fair to say that Missouri is a little bit down right now because they're rooting big time for Georgia and South Carolina's going, woohoo! Ole, Ole Miss, it can beat Missouri, or if AM can beat Missouri, we go. Yep. Second down and two. Look at B Ford coming again. It's complete to Bennett. Nice throw. That's those timing routes that Aaron Murray can just shoot him in there. Big receiver in Bennett. Tremendous confidence that he'll get inside the defender. Almost impossible to stop that play. First down 10. Murray from behind. Watch out. Pass is complete to Gurley. And Murray took a pop by D Ford again. I'll tell you, D Ford is going to get a lot of people looking at him at the next level. Those edge rushers, you don't have to be six foot five anymore. All around the NFL, those smallish 5'11", 5'10 guys coming around the corner like that have great leverage, and he's putting on a show with that speed rush. And he's listed on the charts in between those two heights, Gary. He's 6'2", 240, when, and as you said, when we saw him at Texas A&M. Oh, yeah, put on a, well, oh. we saw so many that day, but he You're finished right. off the game. Second down, seven. I, I, I believe Aaron Murray and Mark Richter asking Penn Wagers, are those not lot late hits on my quarterback? Yeah, that's the third time that he's got hit after he's thrown the ball. Second and seven. Conley back on the field. He's the outside receiver, top of the screen. They go short to Gurley out of the backfield, and he is tackled as he goes out of bounds. Jonathan Jones, number three, made the stop. Auburn needs to be disciplined here. Keep things in front of them. Three points, not the worst thing in the world. Can Georgia find an angle to throw the ball into the end zone? Bennett slot left this time. Here comes Gabe Wright. And Gabe Wright pulls up as the pass is complete to Chris Conley. Yeah, first down, they're going to chance to go up and clock it if they want. Now remember, in the SEC championship game, Georgia does not like to clock it. They like to go. And they do here. Into the end zone, it was Conley, the intended receiver. Back in that championship game, it was Conley. There was one second on that clock. I think we'll see if the replay official puts one second for a field goal. The Auburn Tigers are leaving the field. Now they pull up. Good try, but they're going to take a look at it. Three. Ball's incomplete. The previous One. play is under further review concerning how much time is on the game clock. Looked to me like there was a second. Yep. And once again. Boom. Boom. 
Sure looked like there was one second remaining. Unless it's kept differently somewhere else. At least on TV, he has a second left. After further review, there are two seconds left on the game clock. Please put two seconds on the clock. So it doesn't really make any difference. Two seconds, one second right. is still only time for one play. And they're going to bring Marshall Morgan on to try the field goal. Morgan, who has field goal successful kicks of 55 and 56 this year. This is from... 37 and it is good. They got two seconds. They got the field goal kicker on the field. Aaron Murray reacts to Marshall Morgan's successful field goal attempt. And we've reached halftime. Let's go down to Tracy with Mark Rick. Thanks a lot, Vern. Coach, you get the field goal, but still a lot of work to do. So where do you begin? Well, we just got to get them on the ground defensively, obviously, and then uh, just got to keep being patient and taking what they give us offensively. Don't panic. We get the ball in the second half. We just got to keep playing hard and getting after it. A lot of costly mistakes, some costly penalties. How do you address that in the locker room? You just got to be disciplined. Appreciate it. Thanks. Vern? He's accurate. He's short, but accurate. Actually, he's about 6'1". <laughs> okay, Kurt, but accurate. Kurt. That? <laughs> <laughs> That's the end of the half. 27 to 10. Tim Brando in our New York studio. <laughs>
So a nice start for the Georgia Bulldogs. Yeah, quick passes, trying to keep that pass rush and give the offensive line some confidence early in the second half because, as you mentioned, they remember the first two series as well. Second and three from the 46. Let's see if there's a flag thrown. There is. This is Rantavius Wooten. Finally stopped. Slant, slant, slant. Three of them to start the game. They're going to force Auburn to move up in the secondary. Offside on defense. Penalty declined. The result of the play, first down. That was D4, the uh, defensive end who jumped across the neutral zone. Very difficult to get to the quarterback on those quick passes that's going to force Auburn to move up and play man-to-man -man defense. Three wide to the left. Oh, boy. That's the left side of the Georgia line, apparently. And so. that's going to be first and 15 again. Yep. Boy, the tackles. 62 offense. Five-yard penalty. Damn. Well, maybe 72. Left tackle, number 72, right there, just to help you find him. I'm sure Alvinarius wasn't happy about me finding him. You know what? The tackle should be able to look inside and see David Andrews' head. Watch how he turns his head to signify the snap. See? Yep. Should be able to get that timing. Bennett, from behind, he's tackled across the 45. Nosa Equay, first time we've called uh -oh, his name that's not today. good news for Georgia. Michael Bennett going off the field limping. Remember, he's been struggling all year, missed three or four games with that knee injury. Is it just a little tweak that scared him, or is it something more than that? He had meniscus surgery and missed two and a half games. Second down, 12. Murray across the middle on target. Wow, what a throw. First pass to number 27, Fred McGowan. Tackled by number 19, Brian White. Good protection inside. Beautiful throw. Defended very well by Ryan White. Here's the play before. See if we can see anything. Just kind of got fallen on from behind that time by Igwe. And on third and one, it's Murray on the sneak. And he does get the first down. Is that right? Yes. First and ten. Well, what a contrast in starts for the Bulldogs. Three and out, three and out to open the game. And now they have moved from their own 25 to a first down and ten. They trail by 17. Reggie Davis, the freshman, now the bottom of the screen. Number 81. Good block on D Ford that time. And Davis, no, it's Conley. 31 instead of 81 who makes the catch. Well, you, you can see the worry that Auburn had is the timing routes. They talked about it, that when Aaron Murray gets his rhythm going and his short passing routes, he's very difficult to stop. And that was John Theus, number 71, who was back at right tackle, who had the block on D Ford, yeah. second and one. Not very hard to do it when those two quick pass, those quick passing throws. Easy for the offensive line. Andrew snaps it back. Blitz coming. He gets rid of it again. This is Arthur Lynch, the tight end. The Reezy, number 27, plays the star position for the Auburn Tigers. As Mark Rick told Tracy, Tracy, just run our offense, be patient. Put a touchdown or field goal on the board. Long football game. First and 10 again at the 16. Murray fires it out of bounds. Incomplete. Rump thought he had it, but his body hit across the sideline. Second and 10. Todd Gurley play right here. See if they can get half the distance. Second and ten, is it? It's second, not third. Yeah, the graphic is. There we go. 
Let's see if they won't give the ball to number three here now. Bennett is back in. Good news for Georgia. Looks like this was a design play. Yes, it was. And Murray in for the touchdown. Well, they ran the draw, but they ran the draw with the quarterback. Beautiful block by Gurley on the play. How about that for a start for the Georgia Bulldogs? Beautiful. Wow. Ten straight points by Georgia. If they make the point after. Marshall Morgan hasn't missed in 63 straight. 28 for 28. Make it 29 for 29 this season. Well, it was a quarterback draw. We were, I was speculating whether Todd would get the ball early, but he actually gets the key block. Through the hole, and I think he gets Casanova Ken McKenzie on the play. Wonderful job. Good job by David Andros as well. It's time now for today's offense. Everything Georgia wanted for the start of the third quarter. The lead is 10. Georgia goes 70 yards, 75 yards in 10 plays. Aaron Murray, 6 of 7, 27 17. Let's go down to Tracy Wolfson for more on Mark Rick. Well, guys, we saw Mark Rick get on the officials throughout that first half. That frustration seemed to be the fumble by Auburn. Mark Rick truly believed he was right there. He truly believed they had possession of that. Josh, Josh Harvey Clements, he had the ball right there. He had words with the official. He got the costly penalty, but that seemed to be the root of it all, guys. All right, Trace. Thank you. And so 27-17, Mark Rick's team, 13th year as the head coach. Out of all that time, one losing season. Well, here comes the story of the football game here. Can Auburn run the ball in the second half? They put up 246 yards rushing against the best rushing defense they've faced all year. It's Georgia. If Georgia can't stop the run, it won't matter what Aaron Murray does. This one is short, taken by Corey Grant. He had a 90-yard touchdown return on a kickoff last week. This is T.J. Stripley who makes the stop. Now Red Lobster presents today's Scholar Athlete. It's Stephen Clark, the punter, graduated in three years. He's also working on a master's degree in biomechanics. Red Lobster's commitment to the investment of our future is shown today by donating $1,000 to Auburn University's General Scholarship Fund. First down, 10. Marshall back. Let's it go deep left side. Quambray is open. And they're going to rule him out of bounds. Shag Wiggins did a good job of forcing Bray wide, and yep. he does come outside with his right foot is the first foot that lands on the ground and he's out of bounds. Like Georgia looks like they're trying to load the box and force Auburn to throw the football. Bringing up safety is good as we switch the safety right there into the box. Here's play action. Marshall. And then of course the throw. Yes. That's Sammy Coates. And that's what Gus Malzahn says. We are willing to throw if the defense forces us to throw. It's just that when they give us the run, we feel we can run it. And you counter that with Trey Mason, who has gone over 100 yards in the ball game. Well, the last four games for Nick Marshall throwing the football. Florida Atlantic one, Arkansas eight, Tennessee seven today. And we kind of expected this. Yes, we did. We got 13, and of course, Jeremy Johnson has one for 14, so they've thrown more in this game than the last three combined. Here's Marshall. Oh, big time oh, hit. Boy, Chris Mays, 93. We're in. Auburn, Alabama. Jordan Hare Stadium filled to the brim today as the Auburn Tigers try to go 10 and 1. And Georgia trying to win this game and maintain their hope. It was all.
Auburn in the first quarter. Georgia has played well the latter part of the second quarter and the opening of the third, and they've cut the margin to 27-17. Marshall going for all of it. He's got Ricardo Lewis. It's five on five, and the guy in the blue beat the guy in the white. I would have never guessed, and neither did Georgia, that Auburn would go deep on third and five. Swan is out to the outside. He's got one-on-one -on -one coverage. There's a bit of a miscommunication. Each guy thought the other guy had it. Swan popped up and thought the safety would be back there. The quick motion really made the difference. And they go between center and guard. Trey Mason is the ball carrier again. You know, you think on third and five, and it's an important third down get conversion, and Auburn goes deep for a home run ball. That was a gutsy call by Gus Malzahn, and it worked. That was 44 yards. And a second goal from the five with under nine to go third quarter. This is Corey Grant in motion. They take it. Look at Porsche's block. Look at Marshall's touchdown. Wow, the fullback. He just drove Ramique Wilson into the end zone. And you know, it's those linebackers where it's hard to take a guy on because you're trying to get to the outside and stop the sweep. Cody Parkey for the extra point. Well, same two guys, Brandon Fulce, number 11, and Jay Prosh, number 35. They're going to go this way, and they're going to go this way, and watch the two blocks, especially by Prosh, number 35. He runs Rameek Wilson right in to the end zone. Watch this. Just slams him back in. Great cut by Nick Marshall, and as good as Georgia's drive was, it has to be demoralizing to watch Auburn come right back down the field. SEC on CBS is sponsored by John Hancock. Verizon. Autotrader.com. And by Chick-fil-A. Auburn counters Georgia's opening third quarter touchdown drive with one of their own. 34-17 now in the key play, Gary, third and five. Yeah, you would think right here, it's going to be Corey Moore and, and Damian Swan. These two guys right here, the miscommunication. Watch the quick motion, and the two players get confused. See, they're signaled to each other. One guy goes in motion, and then they both look at each other, and all of a sudden they're by him. Nothing that could happen. The play is beat that quick. The quick motion on third and five. You had to believe Georgia was thinking, what are they going to throw short to pick up the first down? They go for it all. A gutsy call, a nice design for Nick Marshall. He's done it with, the only thing he hasn't done it is on the bike. He's done it with his legs. <laughs> His army has not done anything on a bicycle. Well, he's not going to pedal out of Auburn, I know. <laughs> no, that's right. For the next two weeks until Alabama comes to town. Now, Parkey, who is six for six on kickoffs yeah. for touchbacks. And he's got another one. And a weapon. Tune in for college pro and fantasy coverage from a fan's perspective. Take back your Sundays with that other pregame show tomorrow morning starting at 9 Eastern on CBS Sports Network, the 24-hour home of CBS Sports. Have you been on the top show yet? They called you to be on the top show? No, but I understand you. I, I've been yeah, on I understand it. that. I want that on my resume. I, yeah. Just Be careful to, what you to, wish for. I had to shower an extra day. <laughs> <laughs> three, shower, three showers a week instead of two. <laughs> TMI. First and ten. Same, really. same game plan. Yeah, Bennett. Quick slant. And that has to be good news for the Georgia fans, seeing Bennett, because Bennett is the guy that's willing to go in the middle of the field. He's a big body. Murray puts it in the spot where just Bennett can get it. Well, Ellis Johnson come out of his shell. The defensive coordinator for South Carolina seems to be giving those short passes. 
He was at South Carolina, became a head coach at Southern Mississippi, and then was dismissed last year. That one, Chris Davis knocked it over. Jonathan Rump, the intended receiver. Chris Davis, very aggressive. That was man coverage that time. That was not a soft zone. Second down, Den. Halfway through the third quarter, and the Auburn offense has taken Todd Gurley out of the game. Play action. That one's at the feet of Jonathan Rump. And that is not a lateral. It's an incomplete pass. Let's go back to the studio for a Ford update. Here's Spartans. Back to you. All right, Tim, it's third and ten here. Three down. Looks like they may bring five. They do. Murray forced out, runs right, lets it go. Almost intercepted. Jermaine Whitehead, number nine. It does force the punt. Great discipline by Whitehead. Even though Murray was scrambling, Whitehead saw the crossing Bennett. Bennett put his hand up on the play, and Whitehead cut underneath the throw and should have had the interception. I don't think Aaron Murray ever saw Whitehead on the play. That brings on Colin Barber, number 32. And Chris Davis is back to return it. Poor punt. Will he get a roll? No. Down at the 29. That's the second short punt for Barber. He had one of 23. This one is 36. 7.55 to go in the third quarter. Bobby's happy, at least for now. Quarterback Nick Marshall having quite a day, Gary, against his former team. Well, he's so athletic, so great in space. And, you know, Gus Malzahn has said that he's an athlete first, very confident in his skills, but he can throw the ball. And today, there's been enough opportunities to show Georgia that there's a reason why Georgia recruited him. You know, I mean, he was a, at first a recruit as a quarterback and then as an athlete. But he wanted to play quarterback after the uh, dismissal by Georgia uh, in his freshman season. 9 of 14 for 131, and then on the ground, 76 yards. Don't forget, later in the game, the play of the game presented by Napa Auto Parts. Right now, Georgia needs almost one of those plays that Florida needed against Georgia. You know, something happens to get them back in the game. If Auburn goes and puts a six, seven, eight play drive here, puts points on the board, I think they're looking at playing Alabama for the West Championship with only one loss. Georgia needs something good for them to happen. Under eight. There's Mason. 20, number 21, and that is his. 23rd carry of the ball game. Second and eight. At the 31. Ricardo Lewis in the slot. He had the big game. On the pass on third down and five with 44 yards on the previous drive. Here's Marshall. Ramik Wilson, number 51, gets up to him, but it's a gain of 13. It's hard to do. It's easy to say from up here, but when 35, when he goes around, you follow him. He's on the Art Park block again, and again. Milo Herrera is saying, I'm, I'm tired of this offense. I'm telling you that 35 comes. Is, is there two of them? He either hits me straight or he comes around to the outside. We've been together eight years. Yes. I've never asked you this before. What kind of block? I don't know. Arc block. Arc he block. Arced. He arced. Oh, arced. He's had okay. a nice little arc, okay. too. Okay. I'm, as you know. I've heard that before. I well, didn't make that up. I'm slightly hard of hearing. <laughs> slightly. I thought you were saying Ardvark. No, it, all <laughs> different angles does number 35 attack the defense. I got it now. And here's Ricardo Lewis on the... Leonard, Leonard Floyd stopped that play Ricardo dead. Lewis. 
down by number 28. And Remeek Wilson made the tackle, wasn't it? Yeah. Was it 51? There's Floyd. Remeek Wilson. Watch still 84 down. take on the block to the outside, turn it back inside, and then it's tackled by the linebacker. Remeek Wilson came in leading the SEC in tackles. It looked to me like Leonard Floyd hurt his back on this play. Remeek Wilson still down at the 45-yard line. Wilson's down. I saw Floyd grab his back after the play as well. Time called. We are going to Red Stick, Baton Rouge, next Saturday afternoon. The Aggies ranked 11th at LSU. That means Johnny Manziel, Zach Mettenberger, and it all begins with the Auto Trader College Football Today Show next Saturday at 3 o'clock Eastern Time. And while we were away, Rameek Wilson, who has 14 tackles in this game, was able to walk off unaided, but in pain. And here comes Auburn. Third down six, from the 28. Third down six another big third down play. Last one they faced at third and five on the previous possession. Nick Marshall went deep. Swan comes up like he's going to. Oh, he's blitz. coming. No yeah, doubt. There he is. Marshall steps up, lets it go. Got a man open again. And he had to try and stay oh, inbounds, yeah. did Sammy Coates. And it was overthrown. He had him. He just threw it out of bounds. Maybe uh, the second really bad pass that Nick Marshall has thrown in the game. Missed the first down uh, throw before, and this one led. Look at Coates' uh, ability to go up in the air. Ball kind of drifted on him. Big stop by Georgia, obviously. They had to have it. And that brings on Stephen Clark. Oh, watch out. You, you uh, thinking fake? No, well, no. They, they do run it when Coates is in this position. Nice and high. Look at that. And more than fairly effective. How about that? And a 50-yard punt, first down inside the five. Well, we've talked a little bit about Zach Mettenberger today. We've talked a lot about Nick Marshall. They started their careers at Georgia, both dismissed by Mark Rick. Both went the community college route. And look what they accomplished against the Bulldogs this year. 372 passing. Well, Mettenberger is not a runner. Marshall is. And he's gained 89 along with 131 passing. And now... The shoulders of Aaron Murray. On first down 10. Gurley. Sweet. Gurley on the carry. Forced out of bounds by number nine, Jermaine Whitehead. Out of bounds. Second down two. Second and two. Oh, yes. yes, he did. Whoa. Casanova McKenzie that time put a lick on him. Woo. That's big man taken down by your inside linebacker pretty easily that time. Third and two. Do you throw the ball or do you get Terry go back to Gurley? Auburn is up this time. Play action. Murray bumped twice incomplete. Flag down. I wonder if they're going to get any holding out here at the corner by uh, Auburn on the corner by the, uh, that time. Offside, 27 on defense. Five-yard penalty oh results in a first down. It was the guy covering the slot, Michael Bennett. Therese, Robinson, th Therese. Yes, he was, <laughs> he was offside clearly. Kind of. He's at the six. The ball's at the six and a half. Yep. And so a first down on the penalty. 
Georgia, 4.33 to go, third quarter. Four men down, they bring only four. Murray will throw deep. And he's got a stride. Oh, my what gracious. Catch. What a catch. Rantavius Wooten. I think it's just uh, got the wind knocked out of him. Well, Auburn has moved up, and it is man-to-man -man coverage. Jonathan Jones is on him. Good post route, good throw. I don't think the ball moved. Lays out, catches it, hits the ground. I didn't see him double catch it from that look. I thought he had it all the way. Let's see another one. Just a terrific effort. Yeah, I, I, I think that's going to count. What a, a gamble that time by Auburn. They moved up. No free safety. Aaron Murray read it exactly right. Threw a good ball with a great catch. That's a gain of 41 for the Bulldogs. At a first down 10, Wooten walks off unaided. 424 to go in the third. Brendan Douglas is in the backfield now. The freshman, number 22. Three wides to the left. Hardy Lynch is tight to the right. Lynch goes into the pattern. Murray throws it. Incomplete. Jonathan Rump, number 18. Second and 10. And Auburn makes a complete wholesale change of the defensive line to get fresh pass rushers out there. Darius Owens, D. Ford come off. Gabe Wright comes off. They do play 10 in the DL. Second and 10. Underneath, Michael Bennett. It will be third down. Nosa Igwe, number 94, with the tackle for the Tigers of Auburn. Third down seven. As you call these plays for Georgia, you have to be thinking of four down territory. Third and seven here. And again, three wide left. Auburn brings only four. They hand it off to Douglas. He comes right into the fourth down. And obviously, Georgia was thinking that they had four downs. Chris Davis, number 11, made the tackle. Strung out well, turned back inside, good defense. Fourth down, five. Davis and Conley, top of the screen. Murray drills it. And it's incomplete. Murray was thinking he was going to get a back shoulder throw there, and he did not. The receiver just kept going. Just too far that time, and Jonathan Rump and Aaron Murray, you can see it. That's where the injuries at receiver hurts the veteran, Aaron Murray. He and Rump were not on the same page. Ball goes over on downs with 3.05 to go in the third quarter of play. 34-17. Reese Dismukes is over the ball at center. The clip, Quan Bray gets a little bit of a block from the Reed. And a coach went down. That coach is Mark Rick. And he's a little gippy. Yeah, he's right in the middle of the screen here. He sees it. He anticipates it, but he... Eh, a little, that, that wasn't as bad as it, I thought. Second down five. Let's go this way, Quan Bray, but a flag thrown. That's Trovon Reed, number one, who's getting False some action guard. in this series. 21, offense, penalty five yards, second down. 
Trey Mason. Well, Trey Mason has 24 rushing attempts in this game. You know, the first three games this year, when they were sharing it, Trey Mason had 15, 14, and 10 attempts. It was the LSU game that kind of pivoted. He had 26 attempts from 132. Since then, Ole Miss 21, 27, 32, 20, and now 24 again. And a quick snap and a fumble in the backfield. Marshall picks it up and makes a little bit out of not much. Josh Harvey Clemens, number 25, with the tackle. Yeah, he just dropped it. The snap was fine. Marshall just took his eyes off it. Third and seven. By the way, Nick Marshall was the two-time Georgia High School Player of the Year in Class A. That's how good of a basketball player he was. Rochelle, Georgia. Little town of 1,500, about 140 miles. And George's Mark Fox, the basketball coach, was excited about him playing. Said he reminded him of Charlie Ward. Wow. This is caught by Coates. Stretches the ball across the 50. That's not a bad comparison, by the way. He's a little taller than Charlie Ward, but he plays a lot like Charlie Ward. Very calm, very measured, better arm than advertised, and obviously Charlie, pretty good basketball player. Coach with the catch, and it's first down 10. Nick Marshall. Mason goes back to join him. Mason gets the handoff. Josh Harshi, Harvey Clements with the tackle. Let's go back to the studio for a forward on this drive. Duke up 38-30. Back to you. Oh, what a story that is. Unbelievable. It truly is. Duke could play in the championship in football, and Miami won the basketball championship in the ACC. <laughs> Here's Ricardo Lewis at the 16-yard line. There's about six or seven base plays. And this is the outside speed sweep. They mesmerize you with those inside handoffs. And in this offense, it's very much like the beer offense. They just don't have to pitch it. They hand it off. Isn't it funny? Here we are in 2013 as the quarter is coming to an end. And we're talking about the wing tee, yes. the veer, and the wishbone. And, and power off tackle football. Back to the future. <laughs> That's the end of three. Auburn threatening again. They lead 34-17. We'll return to Jordan Harris Stadium in Auburn, Alabama. Right after this word from your local station. So as the sun has set here in Auburn, Alabama, we begin the fourth with Auburn leading by 17. Vern Lundquist, Gary Danielson, Tracy Wolfson, and the Auburn Tigers hoping to go 10 and 1 and await the arrival of the Alabama Crimson Tide for the Iron Bowl. Georgia needs to have a terrific fourth quarter. With a loss, any hope they had of getting to Atlanta as the SEC East champions will disappear. First down, 10. Look at the total yards versus the rush yards. And this is an Auburn team averaging 320. They handed off Mason up the middle. And he gets a few. It'll be second down. Well, Gary, Auburn, obviously, Georgia started so well in the third mm -hmm. quarter, but here comes Auburn right back. Yeah, Tough to stop. I know these two teams have to concentrate on this fourth quarter, but I'm looking forward to Alabama-Auburn, to tell you the truth. Watching these guys run the ball, I mean, I, I'm just thinking, boy, that is going to be a matchup that we haven't seen in a long time. That's going to be a fun football game. 
Right now it's a second down and six. We started off the year with Nick Saban having to match up against Johnny Manziel. We're going to end up the regular season when matching up with his running attack. Ricardo Lewis in motion. Whoa. There's a fly. False start. Number five. Offense. Offense never got set. Five yard penalty. Second down. Thirty-four, seventeen. Russ Wells on right now is in his, his mind saying, "If we could put a touchdown on the board here, this football game is over." I mean, Twenty-one points is still obviously three touchdowns people can score, but one more, it's over. Marshall escapes the tackle, tipped and incomplete. Late flag came in though. A, a late flag. I don't know obviously who was on. This is Jordan Jenkins giving chase and then missing. Marshall. I assume oh, wow. may maybe a lineman downfield. Could that be it? An elbow receiver, number 50 on the offense. Penalty declined. Third down. That's Reese Dismukes. And a missed tackle again, Gary, for well, the Bulldogs. Yeah, early in this game, the first half. Georgia was caught in space, and they're a good tackling team usually, but today they've had their hands full trying to finish plays. That brings up third down, 11 at the 17. Comes that sweep again. Corey Grant again. Another flag down as he gets inside the five. Yeah, that, that's going to be holding, and that could take it out of field goal range. Another red zone trip that Georgia could get a stop here. Holding, number 82, on offense. 10-yard penalty from the spot of foul. Third down. That's Melvin Ray, the backup wide receiver. Yeah, pretty easy on Trey Matthews that time, too. Grabs his jersey. Right there, I think, is where it happened. Yep. And at the end, Ed, good job by Trey to let everybody know I got held. Third down, 15. Swing, little swing out. Mason out of the backfield. That'll set up fourth down. Jordan Jenkins, number 59, who just missed a tackle, made that one. And that's going to bring on Cody Parkey. He's made two, had one blocked. Still a three-touchdown game for Georgia, even if they make the field goal. It will be 38-37 if this field goal is made with three touchdowns. Ryan White will hold it out of the snap from Jake Lemke. And this one looks good. It is. Twenty point edge for the Tigers of Auburn. Twelve thirty nine to go. And now it's time for our Geico Game Recap. Up 3-0. It was still all Auburn in the first quarter of play. This is Corey Grant, 21-yard touchdown. Auburn up by 10. Todd Gurley closes the margin after an Auburn field goal. This is Georgia's touchdown, 13-7. And Marshall is having an excellent game. In for the TD from six yards out, 20-7. Field goal right before the half, and Aaron Murray was just harassed in the first half of play, mostly by D. Ford, also by Gabe Wright. And then Trey Mason, 24 yard rushing touchdown, 27 7. Right before the half, Georgia got a field goal, and they were most impressive on the opening drive of the third quarter. Design quarterback draw, touchdown. Georgia, Marshall answered with his own five-yard run, 
17, and then two more field goals, the latest of which was this effort by Cody Parkey. And that's where we stand, 37-17. Not only that, Parkey has kicked seven kickoffs, every one of them a touchback today. He's got to be tiring out, doesn't he? <laughs> right. Help. Sheldon Dawson, who missed a little bit of the first half with a cut on his upper lip, is back to return this one. Drives it out again. Boy. It's an all-new night of comedy on CBS, beginning with How I Met Your Mother and Two Broke Girls, followed by the hit comedy Mike and Molly and Mom. It all starts Monday at 8, 7 Central, only CBS. Well, can Georgia get the ball three times in the fourth quarter without, uh, I would assume, they'd probably need an onside kick or a turnover to accomplish that. Two wide right. Rep McGowan is bottom of the screen. They'll feed Gurley, and he doesn't get much. Yeah, I, I really felt without Georgia being able to run the ball with that pass rush, so much pressure on Aaron Murray. I just didn't know if they could beat Auburn without running the ball. They got 62 yards rushing in this game. That's extraordinary. Second and eight, 37, 17, ball at the 27. Murray, pressure, D Ford yet again. And Gurley goes out of bounds. Well, so much expected out of Todd Gurley today. 42 rush yards, and Auburn has four. Look at that. Four different players yeah. with at least that many. Well, we're back to the top of our program, and you said three keys. Stop and you mentioned Gurley, Gurley, Gurley. Gurley, Gurley. Third and one. Gurley appears to have the first down. Yep. Well, let's take a look at three times they went up against Gurley. Well, yes, and I mean, they just had enough penetration up front that either the linebackers or the defensive ends ended up making those plays. And then the other half of this is Auburn's offense kind of took Georgia out of the run game. First and ten, Bulldogs. Murray, here comes D. Ford. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to open up the balloting for Defensive Player of the Week in the SEC. Uh, uh, he might be the leader right now. Wow. Although he flexing his knee on this play. Uh, and uh, limping as he comes off. This is D. Ford. Remember, uh, Auburn does have a bye next week before they play Alabama in two weeks. In the meantime, Georgia goes, uh, they go home to place Kentucky. And then their game with Georgia Tech in state rival. Right now, South Carolina says one loss, and we beat Florida, and we will play in the SEC championship. Gurley goes right, good block on the edge. Uh oh, face mask. That sure looked like yep. it there. There's two of them. Jermaine Whitehead with the face mask. Still a football game, doesn't seem like it. Personal foul, grasping the face mask. Number nine on the defense, added on and in the run. First down. Really doesn't seem like a game, but you know, just one score. We remember the end of that, uh, what, Thursday night game, Thursday uh, 10 days ago when right. Oregon was completely out of it. And then all of a sudden at the end of the game, it could have been a football game. Two onside kicks in a row. First down 10. Inside the 35, here's Murray with a lot of time this time. Brandon Douglas, number 22. Yep. Well, tough football player. Obviously not the breakaway speed of a Keith Marshall or a Todd Gurley. There's not many like that, but a really gamer. Best pass protector the coaches told us on the team. That's a first down. Murray's got it. And Murray gets it. Ryan Smith, the tackler. Oh, 
Well, you better be careful. Do not duck your head, Aaron. Second at eight. 10 15 to go. Georgia desperately in need of a touchdown out of this draw. Murray again. Nice run. Uh, what a gutsy football player. He knows his team having trouble running the ball. They need some running attack. Running the zone read. Keeping it. And getting his team in position to start playing the what if game with the uh, did you go onside kick or do you kick it off one more time? 9.51 to go. First and goal, Bulldogs. Auburn looks like they're going to bring a couple from the outside. They both come. Murray into the end zone. Caught. Touchdown. Grantavious Wooten. How about that throw? You can't cover it any better than that. And Murray runs a couple and then the last throw against Chris De uh, Davis on defense. He's the outside receiver right here matched up man to man. Watch the coverage. Davis jumps right over the play. The ball's thrown low and perfectly defended. Perfect throw. Everybody did their job. Marshall Morgan with the extra point. Nine plays, 75 yards. Aaron Murray, the leader. And a perfectly thrown pass to Rantavius Wooten. Senior to senior. The Home Depot SEC on CBS is sponsored by the Home Depot. NEPA. USAA. And by Bud Light. Georgia got seven. Aaron Murray in his 51st career start. Nine, 896 career completions. He passes, so to speak, Chris Leak. And now, Mark Rick's decision on go deep. Yeah, I, I would. I would kick it deep. I, I would keep it a two possession game, obviously. Force my defense to come up with a stop. Uh, interestingly, Auburn does not even have their hands team out there. They're so sure that Georgia is going to kick the ball deep. And they do. Quan Bray almost bobbled it. Out to the 21-yard line. Well, this odd oh, flag thrown after the completion of the game. Well, it, four different runners we talked about for Auburn today, gaining actually more guards than Todd Gurley, Corey Grant, Nick Marshall, Trey Mason, and then the wide receiver on the speed sweep, Ricardo Lewis. The way the offense is set up, Georgia has no idea who's going to get the ball on any carry. During the run, holding, holding number 44 on the receiving team. 10-yard penalty, first down. So that'll be... Yeah, this will be back towards the 10-yard line, 10-11 yard line, I think. Yep, cameras artist Payne, who has not seen action as a running back today. Well, can Georgia get a stop? You get a stop here now. Auburn will start to feel the pressure. I guarantee you. 9.29. That clock is Auburn's friend right now. If they can keep it on the ground and keep the clock running. Here's Marshall. Directs traffic. Missed tackle. Stiff arm. And he gets about five. Trey Matthews, number 28. Pretty successfully defended play for Georgia on this time. Harvey Clemens forces him wide, cleaned up by Matthews. A three-yard stop, that's a win for Georgia. Matthews limping. Quick snap here. Here they come. There it is. Little toss. Left side, Corey Grant. Tries to get around Matthews, a secure tackle by Matthews at the sideline. But the clock still running. Corey Grant, down by number 28, 
Number 35, he takes you to the action. He gets another good block on his play, forcing it wide. Good finish again by a Olympian, Trey Matthews. Both teams, all three timeouts. It's third down and three. Auburn is four of 11 on third down conversions in the ball game. Third and three. That's Ricardo Lewis. Oh, oh my tackled goodness. each other. A collision. Ricardo Lewis did not get close enough because the, the play clock was going down. I think Nick Marshall snapped it too early and did not allow the motion man to get past the quarterback. Oh, it's going to get very interesting. Very, very interesting. Fourth and six. Stephen Clark, second punt. He was out early in the first quarter. Again, he's only had four returned this year. Reggie Davis is the return man, and he called for the fair catch. It bounced out of bounds. The play clock was running down on it. I think Nick Marshall felt he didn't want to get the delay of game. Five, four. Watch when he stops, starts him in motion, and then he snaps it too soon and does not allow number five. So you can see either you need to go quicker or the quarterback needs to snap it quicker. One of the two. And we invite you to stay tuned for the Jeep postgame show. CBS Sports. This one has gotten interesting by far. The worst offensive series for Auburn in the game. Holding call on the kickoff and then their first three and out. D Ford on the sidelines on this critical series defensively. Remember he limped off on the previous series. First down 10. 7.15 to go. Brett McGowan Sets up top of the screen. Murray, screen pass. Gurley's got it. Gets a block from David Andrews. Gets another block downfield. <laughs> Dallas Lee and Chris Conley. You know, I always think about how hard it is to win a championship. You know, Auburn's thinking, boy, we got a 20-point lead, fourth quarter, we're all good here. And one touchdown, and all of a sudden, it's, oh, my goodness. First and 10, 22-yard gain, under seven to play. At a 13-point margin. Murray steps up, throws it into the ground, incomplete. It could have been intentional grounding. Yeah, look at Penn Wagers looking yeah, over. Yeah, he's looking at it. Could have been intentional grounding. Second down. He, he was still in the tackle box. Also... Might have been holding up there, too. Yeah. Oh, yeah, he totally got rid of that ball. Even Murray looked like he looked back at the referee to see if he got called on it. Second and 10 after the no call. Bennett is left. Conley and Rantavius Wooten at the top. Feed Gurley. Nice tackle, but he got carried about three yards. That was Chris Frost, the middle linebacker, and a gain of nine. Yeah, those uh, middle linebacker tackles for nine-yard gains are good news for the offense. Third and one, they go quickly. Now let's see about the spot as Murray goes on the sneak. Measurement. Veteran quarterbacks, you know, you, as a freshman, kind of lived through all the stuff, but now this senior year, Murray, I tell you, he is dangerous every snap, isn't he? And he's got a fresh set of downs now. Emily right behind, gives him the push, yeah. the help, but just enough to make it. 
First and ten. 6.18 to go. Really haven't seen an Auburn blitz to today. They've cut, come with five, but they played zone behind it. Play action. No, nobody covered. Wide open. It's Arthur Lynch who scoops in. Touchdown, Georgia. First busted assignment of the day for Auburn. I think Chris Davis just blew his assignment on the play. And I don't think Georgia has to go onside kick again. Marshall Morgan for the extra point to make it a six-point game. With 5.59 to go in the ballgame. Chris Davis gets a little cute trying to fake the blitz and freezes, and that allows Lynch to just hit his zone wide open. A little fake to Gurley. Chris Davis bites. And that's as easy as it could get. And Artie Litch just steps in and whoo, pressure. You can feel the pressure in this stadium right now. Lynch, touchdown. Aaron Murray extends his record number of touchdown passes. Ready to go. And Vernon Gary are ready to go again. Fellas. Thank you very much, Mr. Brando. We are indeed 37-31. Seems like ages, I'm sure, if you're an Auburn fan, when they led by 26 time in 117 games going back to 1892. That both teams have 30 plus. D Ford was on the sidelines for that last defensive series for Auburn. Morgan will kick it off. This will be returned. Corey Grant had one for a touchdown last week. Mason had to be careful. Yeah, the special teams that Auburn felt they could control in this football game. Georgia has made the plays. A holding on the last kickoff and a stop inside the 20. Blake Sailors has been a standout special teams player for Georgia throughout his career. And he makes a good one there. First and ten. Last loss when scoring 30 or more for Auburn. You go back to 1996. That one went into overtime. First down and ten. Last offensive possession. Three and out. Man to man. They are challenging. There's no safety in the middle of the field. Marshall chased. Lobs it away. Incomplete intentionally. Garrison Smith was chasing him. Second down and ten. I think back to the Georgia-Florida game when Georgia had a 20-point lead. And all of a sudden, Florida pulled within three. And then Georgia got the ball when it felt like Florida said, if we get it again, we're going to win. And Georgia marched an eight-minute drive to finish the game. Auburn, can they do it? Can they finish the game on offense without giving the ball back to Aaron Murray? Not a promising start on this series either. Play action. Marshall across the middle. Fumbled almost intercepted. That yeah, was a poor pass. He had Coates wide open. He threw it behind him. Josh Harvey Clemens was in cover. That ball was a good three yards behind Coates. He had it. It actually was Swan that was in coverage, and Harvey Clemens, the guy that almost got the interception. And here is your basic third down and 10 from the 19-yard line. Blitz. Marshall chased. Got him from behind. Ramik Wilson, fourth down. Three times in a row, Todd Grantham brought the house. Played man-to-man. -man. Rameek Wilson lined up in the middle, then shifted to the outside right there, and he just runs behind and gets Nick Marshall. Steven Marshall almost he almost did. Yeah. Stephen Clark on to punt. It's Reggie Davis back to return it. And Georgia should come out of this with wonderful field position. Oh, shaked it. 
It does get an Auburn roll, but only to the 45-yard line. In the SEC East, Georgia needs a win to have any hope. They need to win and then get some help. Missouri, South Carolina in front. Out west, Auburn in control of its own destiny, hoping to completely turn around last year, but now things have really gotten tight. And, and remember, if Georgia comes back and wins, Missouri could lose a game and still win the SEC East. First down, 10. Murray. Gurley and a tackle. Plenty of time to run any offensive play you want if you're Georgia. You can run the ball with Gurley. You can dump it off. You can run the screens. Second down, five. 425 to go. First blitz, blitz of the day. Yes. Good protection. The pass is complete to Rantavius Wooten. No. To drop to no. He caught it. And I think the hit forced the ball out. Yep. Chris Davis, who made the mistake on the play before, I think he dislodges this. Yes, he did. Third and five, D. Ford is back on the field at defensive end for the Tigers. He switched to the other side. He's down at the bottom here now. From the 40. Quick trip, Rhett McGowan. Remember the clutch catches he made in that sure Florida did. game? Sure did. Nice block out there by Michael Bennett as well. Good call by Mike Bobo. He knew the blitz was coming. Puts it out there. Bennett gets the block. First down. Under four. You got to give the ball to Todd Gurley here, don't you? He gashed him for nine yards last time he ran the tailback ISO. He's got Merritt Hall, the fullback in front. Number 43, they'll give it to Gurley. Big hole. Missed tackle down at the 20-yard line. He's a man. He blew up Therese, I believe, on the play. My goodness. He went for nine last time. What, 11 or 12 on that one? And a first down 10 with three and a half remaining. Brett McGowan leaves. Luton, top That's of the screen. That's going to be 12 men on the field. There we are again. Yep. Five-yard penalty. Legal substitution. 12 men in the formation on the offense. Five-yard penalty. Here, Aaron Murray arguing. They had 12 men inside the numbers. When you have 12 men inside the numbers, they're going to call it. Brent McGowan left it late, and that's a good call. First down, 15. Clock starts again. Mark ready for play. 3.15 to go. Conley, Bennett, near side. Play action. Murray across the middle. Good throw. One at the seven, Michael Bennett. Nick Marshall did not hit his throw. Aaron Murray does. Low into the inside. With 12 minutes and 39 seconds to go in the game, Auburn led by 20. Georgia, first and goal. Who's going to tackle this man right here? He'll get it. And this time he is stopped. Mosa Igwe and Jake Holland. Right now, George is thinking we would like to eat some clock and score as well. If I'm Gus Malzahn, I might be thinking time out here soon. They do have three. So does Georgia. 2.15 to go.
Into the end zone, tipped and incomplete. Intended for Jonathan Rump. Chris Davis defending. Yeah, Chris Davis guessed that this was going to be an inside slant. He was all over it. If that would have been a fade or a back shoulder throw, he would have been wide open. Third and goal. Do they dare run quarterback draw again? Arthur Lynch split to the left. Davis looks for him. Dropped. Michael Bennett. <laughs> Defended well that time by Jake Holland. He looked inside. And met him head on. Fourth and goal. Down by six. Less than two to play. The Georgia Bulldogs about ready to snap it. Murray with time. Now no time. Did he get in? Yes, he did. Yes, he did. <laughs> Got to look to see if his knee went down, though. It's close. Jay Holland hits him. It's close. Was his knee down? Was his knee down on the other side of Jay Holland? Oh, they, oh wait. wow, wow. No, Gus Malzahn took a timeout. Prior, prior to the timeout, we have a review. The ruling on the field is a touchdown. There is no timeout charge to Auburn. Jake Holland blocks the knee. You cannot see the knee from this angle. You cannot tell if, if Aaron Murray's knee's down before he falls forward. Yeah, Jake Holland's body blocks the view. The umpire was retreating or going forward. Now they're showing the replay on the jumbo trial here. I, so far, I still think it's a touchdown. Well, there's not much to overturn the call, is there? Does his left knee, did his le left knee go down? Let's see. It could have. It's going to be close. I don't know that there's uh, evidence right from back that here, replay. Right back here, right back. Wait, go back just a little. Right, right, watch this. Right, watch right there. Does his knee go down right there? Is there a... Let's see if with the overhead, if we can see whether his left knee goes down. And again, it's... Well, right there. Is that was his, was his knee down or not before he lunges across? And we'll try it again from the split screen. These are in sync. So there he's short. Now does his knee come down before he lunges the ball over? Think of the consequences of this replay. It's unbelievable. I mean, a national championship could be at stake here. It's unbelievable. How about the play by Aaron Murray to take this and give his team a chance? Puts his head down, gets a split forehead on the play. Ryan Smith, Jake Holland make the tackle. And the question is, is it enough to overturn the call? I don't think so. I think it's highly probable that that knee was down, but I don't see the evidence from these replays to overturn it. For the review, the ruling on the field stands. Touchdown. Aaron Murray is the man. I'll tell you that right now.
And remember, just a year ago, there was a question whether he could win the big one. Marshall Morgan. Georgia leads. <laughs> Defended well. There's an opening. Runs through the tackle by D. Ford and then lunges into the end zone. his 51st consecutive start as the quarterback at Georgia. He's getting a bit of a rest right now, having led his team to a total improbable come from behind. Here's his former teammate, spent one year as a defensive back at the University of Georgia, and now will have a chance to bring this team from behind. Cody Parkey's target is the 30-yard line, his career and season long is 47. He had one blocked earlier in this ball game. Morgan will kick off. No, nope, he will not kick and off. And remember that Nick Marshall has good thoughts too about a last minute drive to win a game. He did it against Mississippi State to score with 11 seconds to go. This time, they just need a field goal. They also need a kickoff return. The last two have really been bad. Both of them inside the 20. One with a penalty and one just stopped inside the 20. Georgia with 21 points in 7 minutes and 46 seconds. Penalties by Auburn have cost them here in this fourth quarter. Returnable. Quan Bray. Another good defensive stop. Connor, Connor Norman. Yes, yep. Connor Norman got the stop. Reserve defensive back. Looks like a Charlie horse. This is one of the special team stars. Close to Bobless. And as we talked, the last one was just one of their red zone lack of touchdowns. And that's something they really think that they're better at than anybody. And that's been the story. Well, they're still tending to the special teams player over on the 13 yard line. Remember last time the defensive strategy by Todd Grantham. He didn't even put a safety in the middle of the field. He attacked. He played man-to-man -man on the outside, and Auburn threw the ball three consecutive times despite rushing for over 325 yards, for 325 yards. What will Todd do now? What strategy to counteract the run game or the pass game? Because he rolled the dice before. 1.45 to go. Both teams, all three timeouts left. Marshall and the Tigers. We think back to Tracy Wolfson's interview with Gus Malzahn at the half, and he rude the fact that they had not succeeded in the red zone. And will that be what comes back to haunt them? Marshall. Tipped and incomplete. Shaq Wiggins, true freshman. And that time, Georgia played two deep safeties and tried to keep everything in front of them. Shaq knew that he had help with the safety behind him. He was able to bite on that throw. Second down 10, 139 remaining. Marcus Davis, the freshman. Yep, it'll be third and short. Under 90, uh, 90 seconds to go. That was a gain of nine. Marshall. 
to the 35. Oh, oh, uh, the first down. Using one now? No. Oh, okay. Clock stopped with the first down. Got it. Get up there and go. Cody Parkey is a senior from Jupiter, Florida, hoping to have a chance to put Auburn back on top. Marshall back. Little screen inside. Sammy Coates. They finally got him. Get now now you've got to call timeout. That's the athleticism that I was talking about for Georgia's defense. They can run. Screen to one side. They flow towards that. And then it comes back the other way. And the Georgia defense runs it down. Fifty four seconds remain. Marty Lynch. Well, we showed you a while ago the last time that Auburn had scored 30 or more and lost a game. It was against Georgia and somewhat eerily in that game in 1996. Georgia came from 21 down to win. Everything that Auburn has been throwing has been short. Can they get a squatting defensive back and try to go deep on somebody? Second down 12. As Posh lining up. Play action. He's going deep. Wants to. Can't. Now wings it. He's got a man wide open. And it's dropped because of the hit. Trevon Reed was open, had the ball in his hands, and he was popped. Yeah, I think it was Corey Moore, number 39, that came across the safety. Ball floated just a bit, and Corey Moore comes across, and I think the ball was actually dropped before he got even hit there. Third and 12. Can Georgia's defensive ends make a play, get a sack? Here they come, Marshall. They got him by the end. He's down. The clock's still running. They did. The two defensive ends. That time it was Jordan Jenkins was the guy who grabbed the leg. Jenkins on the top. Floyd on the bottom. Jenkins goes around Greg Robinson, falls down, and then reaches out. What another great effort by a Georgia football player. Loss of six. It's fourth and 18 with 36 seconds to go. As we've said, Georgia had to win today, and they're in the lead by one, and then they had to get help in order to win the SEC East and get to Atlanta. Aaron Murray has put them in front. For Auburn, they've still got their own destiny. They get Alabama here, and were they? No, if they, nope. they lose, they, that's they, right. It's, that's it's their over. second. Yes. Hello. Yeah, Alabama can clinch by winning tonight. That's right. And George is going to take a little discussion on this last play. Now, the one loss for Auburn was in the rain in Baton Rouge when they fell behind. They wound up losing that one 35 21. Well, there's your senior quarterback out of Tampa. Pass fake play called. Nothing there. Takes it. No sliding on this one. Game's on the line. <laughs> oh my goodness. What a comeback if they can get a stop. I'm thinking back to that LSU Georgia game when they beat Zach Mettenberger, their other transfer quarterback, and Mettenberger hit that third and 23. I don't know if Nick Marshall's got that in him like Mettenberger did. Fourth and 18. Same defense, though. 
three-man rush. Let's it go. about a Hail Mary. It's a play of the year. Number 25, Josh Harvey Clemens actually knocks it out of Trey Matthews' hands. Number 28, it bounces up in the air for the most improbable touchdown you'll ever see. For just a fraction of a second, I don't think Ricardo Lewis saw the ball. Nope. See, it was 25 that knocks it out of Trey Matthews' hands. And Lewis, a miracle of miracles. Nick Marshall on fourth and 18. Aaron Murray reacts. Well, there were unsportsmanlike penalties. I think uh, a couple of them at least. Well, of course, Auburn will go for two here. It's a five-point game. That's the fourth catch of the game for Ricardo Lewis. Only the 23rd for the year. Here's the play for two. And they throw off of this. Uzuma is short. 43 38 if Georgia doesn't touch the ball it's gonna land on the on the turf this guy knocks it away from this guy watch the most improbable thing I think I've seen and I can't remember when Josh Harvey Clemens knocks it away from Trey Matthews. Ricardo Lewis bobbled it, grabbed it, soared in. Now, never, I've never seen anything like this fourth quarter. I really haven't. Auburn I've controls never, their own destiny. Never seen a fourth quarter like this. And the time I've been broadcasting. Now think about it. It was 37-17 with 12:39 to go. Well, consider what's on the line now. There's still 25 seconds to go. Two timeouts. If Auburn can do that, I mean, sure. the kickoff. Parkey has not had one returned. This is another one through the back of the end zone. He's had a magnificent night. I mean, just think about the impact on Missouri, on South Carolina, on Alabama, and of course, of course, Auburn. It's one of the most incredible plays I've ever seen. <laughs> First down 10 from the 25 with 25 seconds remaining in the ball game. 
Artie Lynch will split just a couple of yards off the right side. Three wides. Empty backfield. Murray. Got him. That's Lynch. And he's down at the 48. Well, know this. Georgia is going to at least get a Hail Mary to the end zone. Timeout. Georgia. One left. Well, we, we've run out of words. Well, but you, it's you can't alone. hardly blame the guys. You know, they don't exactly know where the receiver is on the play. They're looking up at the ball. They go for the ball. It's just what happens in sports sometimes. That was a year ago when Georgia had a tip ball caught by Chris Conley, short of the goal line. They were one play away from knocking off Alabama. Now, this tip ball, a 73-yard touchdown as Auburn leading by five. Pressure. Murray up. Got a man, Mantavius Wooten. Down at the 25. Eight seconds to go. They're going to get two plays to the end zone. Georgia has used its final timeout. It's, it's Auburn pass defense in the second half has been wide open players all over the field. seconds to go. Aaron Murray has just passed 400 yards passing. 4.15. Well, out Zach Mettenberger at the end of that game. And now he's dueling against Nick Marshall. George is going to have two more plays. Do they go to the end zone on both of them? Murray pumps once, goes deep down the right side. Incomplete, three seconds to go. One more chance. That was intended for Jonathan Rump. Flag on the play. Offside, 30. Defense, five-yard penalty, first down. D. Ford again. Remember, he lined up offside earlier in the game. First down, five, three seconds remaining. Gurley alongside. Got to think Michael Bennett here, do you, do you not? And now Auburn is going to take the time Timeout. Auburn. It did not work for Georgia, by the way. No. Three seconds to go. Georgia comes from 20 down to take a one-point lead. And then on fourth at 18. Nick Marshall goes deep. The ball tipped by a pair of defenders into the arms of Ricardo Lewis, who scooted into the end zone for a 73-yard touchdown. First down five. That doesn't mean anything. It's the three seconds remaining. The height advantage is to the Georgia receivers. Wooten and Conley near side. Michael Bennett is in the slot. Murray chased out of the pocket. Hit as he lets it go. Game over. 
Auburn wins. Another look at the last play. I think it was D. Ford that put the last hit on of the game. Flushed out of the pocket early. Not exactly sure why Aaron Murray rushed, gave up on the pocket. He had good protection, but it was D. Ford that finished off the game. Gus Malzahn has resuscitated this program. A team that was three and nine a year ago. Let's go down to Tracy, who's with the coach and the quarterback. Well, let me start with you, Nick. I don't know. I'm speechless. I can only imagine how you're feeling right now. Take us through it. The pass, the Hail Mary, the tip, the touchdown. <laughs> what was going through your mind there? Um, before we broke the huddle, Ricardo Lewis, he told, he, I heard him saying, like, throw me the ball. So I put my trust in him, and then I know he put his trust in me. I just, I stayed in there in the pocket and then just delivered. Would have thought he made an awesome catch for us tonight. Just a wild fourth quarter. Did you ever think you were out of it? No, no, man. I never thought. That's just something we work on every day. Practice two minute drill, and we just believe. And then we just, we just, I'm just happy for my teammates tonight to get this victory. And what can you say about the importance of this win? Not only coming in a rivalry, but against your former team, and to stay alive now in the SEC West here. Uh, I mean, they fought hard tonight, but we just, we just fought harder. That we just, I'm just really speechless right now. I'm just, I'm just. I'm really happy for my teammates tonight. I could imagine, Coach, I'm sure you're speechless as well, but what was going through your mind in that touchdown and when you knew that Georgia climbed back, your team yeah. has been so effective in that fourth quarter? Uh, hey, they're one of the better teams in the country. They're back healthy, and uh, we knew it was going to be tough. Our guys made a play. Nick made a play then. Ricardo, very proud of them. You told me that your quarterback is just always calm, yeah. cool, collective. What can you say about his performance leading your team here today? Yeah, he, you know, he's got the hit factor. He, he's, he has the ability to make a play when others can't, and we're proud he's our quarterback. And now the continued turnaround of this team setting up a massive showdown yeah. with Alabama in the Iron Bowl. What can you say about that one leading up to it? Yeah, now that it's over, we can start talking about it. It ought to be a real good one. We're looking forward to it. You think? A real good one. I think so. Yeah, all right. Congratulations.